can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1161, Beijing welcomes you makes its debut. Not long after. A call from the organizing committee arrived. Vice President Chi Yihai immediately said, Teacher Zhong, pick someone else. Zhong Yi said, Lillian is the most suitable person. This person you picked is too difficult to get. Chi Yihai kept shaking his head. We don't have the budget for that. It's really difficult to invite an international superstar like her. Zhong Yi said, Can't you play the emotional card? Chi Yihai said, She might not buy it. Zhong Yi blinked. What about the sentimental card? Chi Yihai thought about it. You're suggesting that we use her grandmother as a reason. Zhong Yi said, I'm not suggesting that. This is the job of the organizing committee. I am only offering some advice, that's all. I don't care about the other things, nor do I have power to do so. Chi Yihai couldn't come up with a reply. Lillian was British and around the age of 30. She was a famous singer and actress, as well as one of the top two international stars. Almost no one would not know who she was at the mention of her name. Even Zhong Yi, who was not from this world originally, had heard of her name on multiple occasions over the years, so it was obvious just how famous she was. Compared to someone like Zhong Yi who couldn't even make it out of Asia, her popularity was way, way higher than his. She was definitely a legend in the industry. Worth mentioning was the fact that Lillian's paternal grandmother was Han Chinese. Although Lillian had the standard British look, she had a quarter Chinese blood flowing in her. This was the reason why Zhong Yi chose to invite her. Although Lillian didn't seem like she came to China often, nor had she held any concerts here before, according to reliable sources, she knew how to speak Mandarin. It was rumored that she could speak up to eight languages, so it was even rarer to have someone like her. Of course, no one really knew whether this rumor was true. It could just be the media cooking up news. The media these days said whatever they wanted. If you could say, yes, or, Barker, they would immediately claim that you were proficient in many different languages. They spoke a little more. Finally, Chi Yihai was left with no choice. All right, we'll try. But I can't guarantee anything. We can only try our best to invite her. Zhong Yi said, thanks. Chi Yihai laughed. But I have a small favor to ask. What is it? Zhong Yi asked. Chi Yihai said, can you write us another song to be used for the promotion of the Olympic Games? Zhong Yi was taken aback. Isn't there already one? The one that was performed together by the six celebrities? Chi Yihai said, yes, the promotional song was released some time ago, but it didn't have that great an effect. Its propagation was SOSO and not many people have heard it. We studied why it was like that and believe that it was down to the content of the song, so we hope that you can write us another one. This time, we want it to be better and more effective. We've contracted close to a hundred influential celebrities in the country to perform this song together in a music video. Zhong Yi asked, when do you need it by? Chi Yihai said, the sooner the better. Zhong Yi nodded. All right, I will get it to you by the afternoon. Chi Yihai was stunned. But it's already afternoon. I know, Zhong Yi said. Chi Yihai was very happy. All right, that's what we admire about teacher Zhong the most. You're always so efficient. You've given us a great deal of help this time, so let me thank you on behalf of the organizing committee. Zhong Yi smiled and said, I'll be waiting for your good news too then. All right. Chi Yihai said. After hanging up, Zhong Yi got to work. A promotional song? Which song should he use? It looked like there was only that one. An hour later. The organizing committee for the Olympic Games received the musical score from Zhong Yi via fax. After the professional music team and officials of the organizing committee saw it, they all applauded and praised it. Almost immediately, it was decided that they would use this song. How awesome. Yeah, does he not need any inspiration to create a piece of music? He really can write any kind of song. Very soon, the organizing committee got started with the production work for the promotional song's music video. It was obvious that they couldn't get close to a hundred celebrities into the recording studio to film the music video. 
that would be too chaotic, and also impossible to schedule. After all, they were all big-name celebrities in the country and were very busy with work. Therefore, the music video was filmed in batches. Every person or group would record a short segment before it got edited together in post-production. This was a diplomatic mission, so it was specially handled and arranged. The celebrities were also very accommodating and got down to work without objections. Everyone was giving their best for the Olympic promotional work. And so, a music video that included scores of celebrities only took a day and a half to complete. All of it was done before the opening ceremony rehearsal. On TV. Online. On the radio. They were all playing a song called, Beijing Welcomes You One. Lyrics, John Yi. Composer, John Yi. Xiaodong, Greet Another Rising Sun, The Air A Brand New, Fun One. Li Xiaoxian, Changing Air But Constant Interest, Tea's Full For Everyone. Amy, Our Doors Are Always Open, We're Waiting To Embrace You. Xu Han, A Hug And We'll Be Close As Glue, This Place You'll Come To Love. Zhong Yi, Beijing welcomes you, we've got everything ready for you. Chen Guang, the flowing charm is full of spirit and energy. Fan Wenli, Beijing welcomes you, so let's share a breath under the sun. Zhong Xia, and write a new beginning on this land. There were the new generation singers. There were the heavenly kings and queens. There were the veteran singers. Gathering so many big names together to sing the same song was something that had never happened before. It was the Beijing Olympics that brought them together. The people who heard it all shouted in satisfaction. Great song. This is so good that I'm gonna die. This song is such a classic. Yeah, compared to that promotional song called Be Victorious, this is so much better. The feeling of the song is also good as it portrays our intent to welcome guests from all over the world. The lyrics and melody are by John Yi. Awesome. I'm looking more and more forward to watching Zhong Yi's performance during the opening ceremony. I wonder what song he'll sing. I don't know, they're keeping it a secret. Yeah, the lockdown on the news this time is really strong. What's more, we don't even know if the song will be sung by Zhong Yi alone or as a duet with someone else. In any case, I'm anticipating it. On this day, Beijing welcomes you, spread all across the country. Whether it was the lyrics, melody, or the array of stars singing, this song had reached an unprecedented high. Riding the wave of hype surrounding the Olympics, it immediately took the number one spot across all the major music charts. It was simply unstoppable. In a short period of time, the music video had been watched 600 to 700 million times. Then, almost without any warning, a piece of news that would excite anyone was released. An announcement was made concurrently on news simulcast, Xinhua News, and the official website of the Olympic Games Organizing Committee, the international superstar, Lillian, has accepted the invitation of the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games. She will be arriving in Beijing a day before the opening ceremony, and will be performing the theme song with Zhong Yi during the Olympic opening ceremony. Screams. Astonishment. Craze. The people were all getting excited. Ah. Uh. My God. Lillian? That Lillian? I'm a brain dead fan of Lillian. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Lillian will be coming to Beijing? She'll be performing with Zhong Yi? How's that possible? The organizing committee is so awesome. Yeah, they're so great. Even Lillian has been invited? Lillian, my goddess. Hey, hey, hey. They're really upping the stakes this time. No one did not know Lillian. This news was too shocking and exciting to everyone. Lillian would be attending the Beijing Olympic opening ceremony. She was being so respectful. Compared to the people's enthusiasm, the local show business was kind of stunned. They were all aware of how famous Lillian was but had never worked with her before. In the past, there were Chinese entertainment companies who had wanted to invite her to the mainland to hold a concert, but those invitations did not even get a response. Li Ku, one of the country's most famous directors, even invited Lillian to guest star in one of his movies. It was only a guest role that would take at most a day of filming and paid 40 million renminbi, 
but Lillian still rejected it. This was an international superstar. A person whose presence was revered by all. And now that she was coming to China, the first person she'd be working with turned out to be Zhong Yi. This made many of Zhong Yi's foes in the industry burn with hate. However, Zhong Yi, who was at the center of it all, remained quite calm. After all, he couldn't truly be said to be from this world. He had never heard Lillian's songs when he was young, nor watched her movies. He only caught up on those when he got here, so it was very difficult to grasp the admiration that people from the industry had gradually developed for her. That was why his feelings for her weren't that strong. But if he was going to work with Angelina Jolie from his previous world, he would probably be excited to no end. That was because he grew up watching her movies, and his admiration for her had gradually developed over a decade or two. Thus, Zhong Yi was very calm when Chi Yi Hai called. It's settled. Chi Yi Hai said. Zhong Yi smiled and said, All right, thank you for your hard work, President Chi. Chi Yi Hai gave a bitter laugh. We spent a lot of effort this time and specially flew a team over to Britain to speak to Lillian and her talent agency. The process was extremely difficult, so I won't talk too much about that. But the good thing is that we managed to invite her, although she can't take part in the opening ceremony rehearsal tomorrow due to a scheduling conflict. She can only arrive one day before the actual opening ceremony, so I hope there's enough time for you two to get things sorted out before then. Zhong Yi said, there'll be enough time. We're both used to performing live, so that won't be a problem for us. But of course, she'll have to learn the song first. Chi Yi Hai said, that's for sure. We've already sent the song to them. Or rather, if it weren't for this song of yours, Lillian's team would probably not have agreed to it so readily. They were also very happy with it. Since she can't make it tomorrow, it won't be necessary for you to join in the rehearsal either. We'll just head straight into the opening ceremony performance. The stage has been set up. We're just going to wait for the performance now. I'm really starting to look forward to the opening theme song performance on the day of, so don't disappoint us. Chapter 1162, Before the Opening Ceremony. Ten days later. There was only a day left until the Olympic Games began. On the streets and alleys of Beijing, more and more foreigners could be seen walking around. They were all touring the Forbidden City, Summer Palace, and other tourist attractions. The foreign contingents had started arriving some time ago and checked into the Olympic Village. Under the constant bombardment by the media, the atmosphere surrounding the Olympics had reached its peak. There was practically no other news being reported other than the Olympics, like the latest updates on the athletes and the opening ceremony. It was likewise in the foreign media. The South Korean media, on Yoon Hee suffers an injury in training and could miss the Beijing Olympics. The Japanese media, famous swimmer Obota chosen as the contingent's flag bearer. The North Korean media, the motherland's contingent vows to surpass China and America in the gold medal tally for first place. The English media, Lillian to attend the Beijing Olympic opening ceremony. The Canadian media, the most beautiful woman in Britain, Lillian, will be performing the Olympic theme song. This was a day that belonged solely to the Olympics. The entire world had their eyes on Beijing. In the Olympic Village. At the main stadium of the Olympics. After many workers finished remodeling the performing stage, they added some final decorations and confirmed that everything was in place. On the enormous big screen, some unrelated visuals were displayed to test the camera angles and equipment. Judging from the tense atmosphere, they were in full preparation mode for the main event. But Zhong Yi was totally at ease. He sat in the audience and took a call. Son, get hold of a few more tickets. Didn't I already get them for you and dad? It's not enough. Big sis Ju from the neighborhood came to me and asked if she could have one too. Heh, do you think I'm selling cabbages in the market? Even I can't get so many tickets for myself. Try to ask for a few more. Everyone would like to attend the opening ceremony. And there's your auntie Chen and auntie Lee too. All the neighbors came to ask me, so how can I not get the tickets for them? Oh, all right. I will try to ask for more. Oh, and get Lillian's autograph as well. I haven't even met her in person yet, and I'm not sure what time her flight will arrive either. Just ask for it. Okay, I understand. 
A little while later, he received a few more calls. Liao Ichi called. Teacher Zhong. Ari, classmate Spinach. Can I ask you for a favor? Don't put it that way. Just tell me what you need. Can you can me an autograph from teacher Lillian? Oh damn, you want one too? Yeah, I've liked her for many years. Sure, I'll ask for you when I get the chance. Thank you so much. Ha ha, let me buy you a meal someday. Just choose the place. Then Grandma Zhongxia called, asking for the same thing. Grandma Zhong. Little Zhong, has Lillian arrived in Beijing yet? I don't think she's here yet. Can you get me an autograph? Whoa, you want one too? My granddaughter likes her very much, almost to the point of being fanatical. She asks me every day, so I really have no choice but to ask on her behalf. You're the one who can get closest to Lillian, so of course I have to ask you. Sure. I'll get one for you. Thank you, haha. This was not the first time he was receiving these calls. Over the past 10 days, he had been taking countless calls from his friends on his cell phone or on the office line at his studio. Most of them were regarding the international superstar, Lillian. This led Zhong Yi to discover in shock that he had so many friends and their families who were Lillian's diehard fans. For example, Yao Jintsai's wife, Chen Guang's eldest niece, Amy, as well as his own three sisters. It could be seen just how charming Britain's most beautiful woman was. This made Zhong Yi look even more forward to working with her. He wanted to see just what kind of a person this legendary international superstar was. Executive Director Li Ke led a group of the staff past him. Zhong Yi greeted him and asked, Director Li, has she arrived yet? Li Ke looked at his watch. She should be here soon. Her flight arrived two hours ago, so she's probably already on the way. Zhong Yi nodded. All right, I'll go for a smoke then. Li Ke said in a speechless manner, this place doesn't allow smoking. I need to go handle some work, so I'll tell you when she's here. The duet that you two will be performing is the most important segment of the opening ceremony, so it must be perfected by today. We've readied a place for you two to rehearse. I'll be off now. Zhong Yi waved goodbye and got up to head out of the stadium. Outside, there were people working everywhere, as well as security personnel deployed. Together with a large number of volunteers, it wouldn't be nice if he lit a cigarette here. So he walked on. Some of the volunteers secretly came looking for Zhong Yi to get his autograph. There were also some workers who quietly came over to take pictures with him. Other than times when Zhong Yi had urgent matters to attend to, he would rarely reject such requests. Once he satisfied everyone, he put on his sunglasses and found an empty corridor. He looked to the left, then to the right. There was no one around. Great, this place would do. Zhong Yi took a cigarette and a box of matches out. He struck a match and lit the cigarette before starting to smoke in satisfaction. This fellow had been constantly talking about how he wanted to quit smoking and drinking, but that was just pure talk. He had never, ever taken any action to do so. He had smuggled in the matches with much effort. The security checks when coming into the Olympic Village and Stadium did not allow any lighters to be brought in. They were very strict with the checks, even on those who were working here. Zhong Yi already knew all this as he had been here several times, so he just stuffed the matches inside the cigarette pack. After all, the security personnel would not really check him so thoroughly since he had status. That was the only reason why he managed to smuggle it in. Suddenly, he heard footsteps from behind. Zhong Yi quickly flicked the cigarette away and extinguished it under his feet. This was not something to be proud of at all in the first place. If Zhong Yi was exposed to have been smoking in the Olympic Stadium even though he knew it was against the rules, it would surely be sensationalized in the news. He was just about to leave when he realized that the click clack of the high heels was beside him. Hey! A woman's voice sounded. Was she calling out to him? Zhong Yi turned his head as a reflex and was surprised. It was a very tall Caucasian woman whose auburn hair was very conspicuous. She didn't look very old but was not young either. She had a pair of sunglasses on that were even more oversized than Zhong Yi's, so he couldn't really make out her exact age. A foreigner? 
Which country's athlete was she? Or could she be a foreign coach? Zhong Yi looked at her and stammered in his broken English, Why why you are CC calling me? He pointed to himself. The ginger woman smiled and said, Yes. Zhong Yi blinked and said, How, helping, you? Even his grammar was a mess. The redhead was taken aback. What? Zhong Yi was still throwing out what he was trying to express word by word. If a foreign athlete needed help, he couldn't just ignore it. But this fellow's English could only be described as atrocious. It was so broken that not even a Chinese citizen would be able to understand him, let alone a foreigner. While Zhong Yi was figuring out which words to use, the red-headed foreigner said something very surprising. She smiled and said in the Beijing dialect one, I say, bro, your English isn't all that put together. I think it's better that you stick to using Mandarin. You must be a Chinese friend, right? Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. The red-headed woman elegantly took out a cigarette and waved it at Zhong Yi. It's nothing, actually. I just wanted to see if I could borrow a light since I saw you smoking. My lighter was nipped during the security checks. Dumbfounded, Zhong Yi threw his matches to her. The ginger woman caught it in midair. Ha ha, thank you. After she lit her cigarette, she leaned back against the wall and started smoking. Then she threw the matchbox back to him. Zhong Yi caught it, but he was still in a state of shock. It was like he had seen a ghost. Can you imagine a Caucasian woman speaking the Beijing dialect fluently? Damn, your Peking East is even better than mine. Nipped? You even know how to use that word? Was this woman some kind of god? Zhong Yi was shocked beyond belief. Chapter 1163, Hello, Fellow Smoker. In the corridor. She was smoking gracefully while holding a cigarette pack between her fingers. Zhong Yi glanced at the words on it but did not know what brand it was. It was likely that this was a foreign brand for women as the cigarettes looked very slim. Zhong Yi lit up another cigarette and said, Did you grow up in Beijing? The redhead turned to look at him. No, but my Chinese teacher is from Beijing. I see. Zhong Yi said in admiration, You really learned it well. The red-headed woman laughed. I guess. I do have some talent for languages. Zhong Yi gave her a thumbs up. Now she asked, Are you an athlete? Zhong Yi smiled and said, No, I'm not. A volunteer, she asked. Zhong Yi shook his head. I'm not that either. I'm just nobody to be concerned about. She said, Are you a local? Zhong Yi said, That's right. I can hear it, she said with a smile. Zhong Yi said in amusement, If I didn't see you and just heard your voice, I would have thought that you were a local too. She smiled. The two of them began to chat, lulls here and there. Fellow smokers enjoyed one of the most intimate relationships in the world. Be it men or women, young or old, it was not a relationship that was separated by geographical boundaries. Once they came together, even without having to say a word, they would instantly know if the other person needed a cigarette, or a light with just a simple gesture to which the other person would unconditionally provide. After that, they would be thick as thieves and puff as they talked about everything under the sun. They finished smoking their cigarettes. The Caucasian woman shook the cigarette pack in her hand. Do you want to try mine? Zhong Yi did not stand on ceremony with her. Sure. I'll have one. As he took one, he passed his cigarettes to her. Have you tried this before? It's flu-cured tobacco. The Caucasian woman took a cigarette from him like it was the most natural thing in the world. I haven't. I'll give it a try. When I start work in a while, I won't have time for a cigarette break. I better have a few more while I still have the chance. You're right about that. Zhong Yi laughed. The two smokers were each more hardcore smokers than the other as they lit up another cigarette. But midway through their second cig, the fire alarm above them suddenly blared, perhaps due to the corridor being filled with too much smoke. Ring 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 ring. It was followed by the distant shouting of employees and security guards. Huh? What's the matter? Where's the fire? What's happening? It's coming from zone 2. Zhong Yi and the red-headed woman were caught off guard. 
they had not expected that the fire alarm would be so sensitive. When they heard distant footfalls sprinting over, the two of them instantly gave each other a look of understanding before turning and diving into a janitorial closet. Zhong Yi slammed the door shut. The redhead stubbed out her cigarette. They could hear footsteps outside the closet. The redhead put her finger to her lips. Sure. Zhong Yi understood and nodded. He also did not wish to get caught red-handed as this was not something to be proud of. They could hear sullen voices outside the door. Who was it? Who was smoking in here? Don't they know that smoking is not allowed in the stadium? How did they bring a lighter in? What was security doing? What if something serious happens as a result of their carelessness? Find the person. They definitely wouldn't have gotten too far. Aren't they trying to make trouble like this? Hearing the scolding outside, Zhong Yi was too embarrassed to make a sound. When the footfalls trailed off, the red-headed woman asked, Are they gone? Zhong Yi pressed his ear against the door and listened. They're gone. The red-headed woman smiled and said, We nearly got caught by them. Zhong Yi said, The alarm went off with just a few cigarettes. How can this piece of crap be so alert? When did the alarms in this country become so sensitive? Next time, let's find a place with a window. This wouldn't have happened if the smoke dispersed outside. The redhead smiled at him. I've got to run. Do you want to meet up for a smoke in a bit? Zhong Yi said, yeah, but why don't I give you the matches? The redhead said, how could I possibly? Why don't we do it this way? Let's arrange to meet again at this place in two hours. I reckon I'll be busy until night. I sure won't be able to bear it if I don't smoke a few. Zhong Yi nodded. All right. After the fellow smokers set a time to meet, they departed and went their own ways. Zhong Yi pretended like nothing had happened as he strolled back to the stage. When he got back, someone came looking for him anxiously. It was assistant director Ju from the opening ceremony program team. Professor Zhong, where did you go? Zhong Yi blinked and said, I went to the bathroom just now. Assistant Director Ju hurriedly said, Let's go, they've already arrived. Who's arrived? Zhong Yi had totally forgotten. Teacher Lillian's team. Assistant Director Ju pulled Zhong Yi along as they quickly walked toward the other end. Her team arrived a long time ago, and everyone is waiting for you. Zhong Yi said evenly, I've also waited for them for a long time, so why can't they wait a while for me? Director Ju, we don't need to be in such a rush. Assistant Director Ju didn't know whether to laugh or cry. You're really great. I think you might be the only person in the world who's not taking things with Teacher Lillian seriously. He knew what Zhong Yi was like in that he was way too good at offending people, so he reminded him out of worry, I'm telling you, Professor Zhong. This collaboration was only made possible because the various parties have all spent a great deal of effort on making it happen. It was not easy to get teacher Lillian to come to Beijing. We don't care if you offend other people, but please don't ever, ever offend our foreign guest. Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, listen to what you're saying. Am I that kind of a person? Assistant Director Ju thought to himself who else would be that kind of person if you were not? In an office. When they opened the door, the room was full of people. The Chinese side consisted of executive director Li Ku and the officials of the organizing committee. Meanwhile, the other side were all Caucasians and probably from Lillian's team. However, Lillian herself was nowhere to be seen. John Yi came in. Director Li. Director Li grumbled, did you go and smoke just now? An organizing committee official said, Professor Zhong, were you the one who caused the alarm to go off earlier? Zhong Yi said in surprise, ah? What alarm? I don't know. I was just in the bathroom and didn't hear any alarms. What happened? The person from the organizing committee said skeptically, it wasn't you. Zhong Yi played dumb and said, what about me? Oh, it's nothing then. The person from the organizing committee dismissed him with a wave. Li Ku said, let me introduce you. This is teacher Lillian's team. He was also meeting them for the first time, so he could only give a brief introduction. At this moment, the door opened again. A red-headed woman walked in. 
Immediately, a Caucasian woman from their side asked her something in English, probably about why she had been gone for so long. The redhead smiled and said in English, it wasn't easy finding the bathroom. Then, the red-headed woman saw Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi saw her as well. When the two of them spotted each other, they were stunned. A person from the organizing committee smiled and pointed at Zhong Yi, speaking in English, this is teacher Zhong Yi, who will be performing with teacher Lillian. Then he introduced her to Zhong Yi as well. This is teacher Lillian. Would you like to get to know each other a little? Zhong Yi took off his sunglasses with a blank expression. The redhead also took off her sunglasses. A jaw-dropping, stunning face that made everyone stare in astonishment was revealed. She had auburn hair, a tall figure, and big eyes with a color of European origins. Her skin was also frighteningly fair, although it was not the kind of delicate fair skin that Asians had, but the kind that was unique to Caucasians. Most worth mentioning was the view of her chest. There was once a study that compiled the statistics of countries with the biggest women's breast sizes around the world. Britain topped the list and was indeed worthy of its reputation, as could be seen here. This was the most beautiful woman in Britain. This was one of the top international superstars in the entertainment industry. It was her? It actually turned out to be her. Lillian stretched her hand out with a smile while she continued to look at him. Zhong Yi could not help but laugh as he stuck out his hand and shook her hand. A thought cropped up in their minds. Hello, smoking buddy. Chapter 1164, Because I'm his mother. The next day. On the day of the Olympic opening ceremony. There was wave after wave of excitement online. Cheering your athletes on. Go for first place in the gold medal tally. Eagerly awaiting the opening ceremony. Lillian, my goddess. This is going to be Lillian's debut performance in China. There are only two more hours to go. I can't wait. Lillian. I love her so much. Hey, didn't we forget about Teacher Zhong? Why should we care about Teacher Zhong? Even if you don't follow that guy, he'll still stir up something big every now and then, and you can see him on the news every other day. But it's different for Lillian. This is her first time coming to China to perform. It's going to be a historic moment. Foot, that's true. I'm still looking forward to hearing Zhong Yi's new song. They kept it under wraps really well. No one knows what kind of song they'll be singing. Lillian seems to have just arrived in Beijing yesterday. I wonder if they can pair well together? I'm very worried about them. I'm also very worried. But what I'm worried about is that bad temper of Zhong Yi's. Hopefully, he won't end up fighting with Lillian's team. We all know that when Zhong Yi flies into a rage, he doesn't give a damn about anyone. Damn it, previous poster, don't jinx it. Now that you brought it up, I am starting to get a little worried. At the venue of the Olympics. Little did they know, Zhong Yi and Lillian were getting along splendidly. The two of them were in a lounge with a window that had access to the open air. As this place was in a very remote area of the Olympic venue and everyone was busy with the ongoing events at the main arena, hardly anyone came over here. The lounge window was open at the moment, and smoke was constantly dispersing out from inside. Zhong Yi had a cigarette in his mouth as he pointed at the music score and said, let's do it according to how we did it in yesterday's rehearsal. Lillian held a cigarette between her fingers and said, all right, maybe I'll go an octave higher over here. You're still going higher? Zhong Yi said, I guess that's fine, but I'm not going an octave higher. My next register up doesn't sound good, although I can still reach it if I want to. Lillian nodded and said, then it's settled. After our smoke, let's run through it once more. Zhong Yi said, okay. On the day of the opening ceremony, in all the years of the Olympics, probably the only ones who dared to smuggle in matches and secretly smoke at the stadium were Zhong Yi and Lillian. In the Olympic Village. As there was still plenty of time left for the athletes to proceed to the stadium where the opening ceremony was to be held, the athletes from the various countries stayed in their respective apartments to chat, train, or rest. At the Chinese table tennis team apartment. They're definitely ruining the theme song by letting Zhong Yi sing it. His singing is so terrible to listen to. I wonder why they let him sing a duet with Lillian. Just watch. 
if he ruins the song, it'll reflect so poorly on our Chinese people. At the Chinese gymnastics team apartment. Why is everyone on the internet talking about the theme song that Zhong Yi and Lillian will be singing? Because Lillian is an international superstar. Actually, Zhong Yi isn't bad either. What do you mean he's not bad? He's totally a hooligan. Many of the athletes and coaches who were involved in the scolding battle with Zhong Yi were grumbling and complaining. The skit on Beijing Television's Spring Festival Gala, playing it up, had caused many of those in the Chinese sports world to become Zhong Yi's enemies for life. They would not be satisfied if they did not criticize him some. The central TV live coverage had already begun. There were a total of three people in the live coverage studio and one of them was Yu Yi. If Yu Yi's popularity had not soared because of the Go War between humans and machines some days ago, she would not have had the opportunity to take part in this Olympic live coverage event. At most, she would have been assigned to conduct interviews on the ground rather than being placed within the live coverage studio as one of the hosts. The famous commentator, Zhao Ji, said, We can see that every country's leader has entered the venue. Yu Yi smiled and said, According to the information we received, the Beijing Olympics has the highest participation of world leaders in all the years that the Olympics have been held. It is also going to have the highest number of countries around the world who are broadcasting the Olympics on television, and giving the most coverage of events in the history of the Games. That is the beauty of sports and the charm of the Olympics. It was getting closer and closer to the opening ceremony. The stadium was filled with several tens of thousands of people, and nearly all seats were occupied. This was astonishing and pumped everyone up. It was the first time that China was hosting the Olympics. As a first-time host, they warmly welcomed every country's delegation to the country. With so much attention from the whole world focused on them for the first time, this was not something that they had experienced before. The Chinese were all hoping that this Olympics would go down in the annals of history. Zhao Ji said, today is a historic moment. Another commentator said, yeah, I'm already getting excited. Yu Yi said, let's switch to a view of the grounds, where we will be interviewing the live audience. They switched over to the cameras on the ground. A central TV reporter appeared on camera. He smiled and said, thank you to our hosts in the studio. I'm currently at the National Stadium, which is the main venue of the Olympics. Everyone can see that the seats are full. Over here, the majority of the audience are locals. But we also have some foreign friends who specially came from overseas to support their country's athletes. I will now interview some of them to understand what their expectations for this opening ceremony are. He turned around and walked into the audience. The cameraman followed. The live broadcast was being televised across the country. The central TV reporter pointed his microphone at a foreign woman and said, Hello. She was part of a group that consisted of other foreigners. When they saw the camera, they immediately waved and screamed madly at it. The reporter asked in English, What do you look forward to most during the opening ceremony? That foreign woman immediately yelled, Lillian. Lillian, of course. She's my idol for life. I love her. The central TV reporter found a Chinese young adult next. Hello. The young adult faced the camera nervously. Hello. The central TV reporter asked, the opening ceremony is about to begin. What do you wish to see most? The young adult answered without any hesitation, I only wish to see Lillian. The reporter asked, why? The young adult gave a shy smile and said, because she is my goddess. I've listened to all of her songs and watched all the movies she acted in. The reporter laughed and said, it looks like you are a diehard fan of hers. All right, thank you. After that, the central TV reporter interviewed a few more people. Lillian. Lillian, of course. I'm only here to see Lillian. As expected, everyone talked only about Lillian. The people watching the live broadcast on TV were amused. I only want to see Lillian, no one else. Did you expect that I would want to see Zhong Yi? We're already bored of him. Ha ha. How can teacher Zhong compare to our Lillian? You can ask a hundred people and they'd all tell you that they're here to see Lillian as well. At the stadium. 
The Central TV reporter smiled into the camera and said, it looks like this most beautiful woman from Britain is far too popular. I'll keep asking around to see if there's anyone with a different answer. He found an auntie to interview. The auntie was on her cell phone, her head down. The Central TV reporter walked up to her and said, hello, auntie. She was taken aback. Hum? The reporter asked, who do you most look forward to seeing during the opening ceremony? The auntie answered, Zhang Yi. That central TV reporter was jarred by her answer. Great, we finally have someone saying something different. So why are you looking forward to seeing Zhang Yi? Is it because you're looking forward to hearing his new song? The auntie said, nope. The reporter probed, then is it because his duet partner is Lillian? The auntie said, nope. The reporter asked dumbfounded, then why are you looking forward to seeing him? The auntie looked at him as though he were a fool of some sort. Because I'm his mother. The reporter stumbled and nearly fainted. The audience watching the live coverage laughed hysterically. Ayo, I can't take this anymore. Ha 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 ha. How funny is that? Can it be any funnier than this? Pfft. This freaking answer is going to be such a classic line. I nearly piss myself laughing. Ha 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 ha. I'm in stitches. In the live coverage studio. Zhao Ji said in a stunned manner, is she really Professor Zhong's mother? Yuing Yi stopped holding back her laughter. Yes, I saw auntie when I was attending university. After this many years, she still looks as young as ever. When the audience heard that, they laughed even harder. Just how coincidental could it get? In a stadium with several tens of thousands of people, the reporter had actually interviewed Zhong Yi's mother and even asked such a silly question. Chapter 1165, an Olympic theme song that astounds the world. At Zhong Yi's maternal grandma's house. His relatives nearly collapsed from laughter. His first uncle said, look. His second aunt said, big sis is on TV. His third uncle said, it's Central TV's live coverage of the opening ceremony. The interview segment was recorded and went viral on social media. Many of the common folk were amused every time they watched the gift due to the reply, because I'm his mother. This caused Zhong Yi's mother to become a meme just an hour before the Olympic opening ceremony was to commence. She enraptured everyone and nearly dampened the serious atmosphere surrounding the Olympics. They were indeed mother and son. Each was funnier than the other. The netizens were laughing so much they couldn't close their mouths. They were loving this. But this minor episode was not enough to distract from the main event. An hour later, the Olympic opening ceremony finally began. The entire world was watching it unfold on the live broadcast. The entire audience stood up. Everyone had their hands in the air. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. As the entire audience counted down with the sunset to welcome the arrival of the night sky, it was lit up by countless fireworks launched into the sky. This was not the Beijing Olympics that Zhong Yi was so familiar with back in his previous world, and was an entirely new opening ceremony over here. There were no fireworks that formed the footsteps walking in from a distance one, but a new choreography that consisted of golden stars exploding open in the night sky before extinguishing and then reigniting. The golden stars rose higher and higher. Every ignited firework exploded with a circumference larger than the one before it. The 3D effect was incredible and the visuals were stunning. Just this fireworks show at the start of the opening ceremony amazed the entire world's audience. The audience at the stadium had an even more intense experience. Just looking up into the sky, they could see dazzling, huge, golden stars exploding one after another over their heads. Now the music played. The Olympic theme song's melody floated through the stadium. A light flickered to life in the middle of the stadium that had just turned dark. The spectators were stunned to discover that there was a large model of the globe that wasn't there before. There were a myriad of colors on it, depicting the oceans, continents, and countries of the world. It looked exceptionally beautiful under the lighting and was even spinning slowly without pause. There were two shadowy figures standing on a stage atop the globe. When the light worked its way over to them, their faces were illuminated for everyone at the stadium, as well as all over the world, to see. 
Zhong Yi was standing on the left. Lillian was on the right. Piercing screams echoed throughout the stadium. In the audience, Zhong Yi's parents were staring fixedly at the stage. Zhong Yi's three sisters jumped up from their seats to wave and cheer. The hosts on Central TV's live broadcast stopped talking. All over the world, people who were watching TV also went silent. At center stage, Zhong Yi and Lillian stood atop the globe and looked at each other and smiled. Zhong Yi's hand was trembling a little, not because he was nervous, but because he was excited. He had never before been on such a big stage with so many people listening to him sing. All he could see around him were lights, cameras, and tens of thousands of shadowy figures. He could not see their faces, but he knew that the entire world was watching him at this moment. He also knew that many of them were waiting to see him make a fool of himself. However, the more it was this way, the better his state of mind became and the more fighting spirit he had. He lightly raised his microphone and shook everyone with his Mandarin singing. You and me, from one world. We are family. Travel, dream, a thousand miles. Meeting in Beijing. He was singing in the tenor register. His range went very high. The live audience was startled. The home viewers were also dumbfounded. They had never heard Zhong Yi sing like this before, they really had not. Even Li Ku and his program team who were in the wings were stunned by the singing. Even during the rehearsals, they did not hear Zhong Yi sing it so well. Zhong Yi smiled as he raised his other hand in a welcoming gesture. Come together. Put your hand in mine. You and me, from one world. We are family. The stadium exploded. Shouts. Applause. Screams. All kinds of sounds were mixed together. Then, Lillian raised her microphone. When she sang in English, she pushed the atmosphere to its peak again. It gave countless people watching TV goosebumps. You and me, from one world. We are family. Travel, dream, a thousand miles. Meeting in Beijing. Come together. Put your hand in mine. You and me, from one world. We are family. The two of them looked at each other. Then Lillian sang again. Simultaneously, Zhong Yi raised his microphone. You and me, from one world. We are family. They harmonized. Lillian had switched to singing in Mandarin. The foreign audience was stunned. The stadium audience went crazy. The two of them smiled as they sang. Travel, dream, a thousand miles. Meeting in Beijing. Lillian sang in English, come together. Zhong Yi sang in Mandarin, put your hand in mine. They sang together in English. You and me. From one world. We are family. The atmosphere hit a fever pitch. Ah. This is so awesome. Lillian sang in Mandarin. Zhong Yi actually sang in English. It's so good I'm crying. They sang so well. With this song, they had astounded the entire world. The British netizens. How moving. That Chinese singer is really good. Was the song written by him? What's his name? The Japanese netizens. The lyrics were really well written. It's no wonder Lillian would accept the invitation to take part in the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympics. This song is absolutely world class. Zhong Yi? Isn't that the Go player? The Thai netizens. How nice. I never expected there to be such a nice opening theme song. It's really quite nice. On Central TV's live broadcast. The famous commentator, Zhao Zihao, said, How wonderful. Teacher Zhong Yi and Teacher Lillian's duet has officially commenced the start of the Beijing Olympics. This is the first time on the international Olympic stage that China has been heard. This is the Beijing Olympics. We have arrived. Yu Yingyi also exclaimed, this is so amazing. There were only cheers from the Chinese netizens. Many of the overseas audiences and media were also full of praise. The song? The performance? Their singing skill? the lyrics. It was all impeccable. With this, the athletes and coaches from the sports world who had a feud with Zhong Yi, 
and were grumbling about him singing the Olympic theme song no longer uttered a word. It was at this moment that many people realized why the organizing committee had chosen Zhong Yi for the performance. They finally understood why the organizing committee had chosen to use Zhong Yi's song, You and Me, despite the opposition of those in the sports world. That was because the opening theme song could only be this. No other song could top this. Both Zhong Yi and Lillian had performed the opening theme song brilliantly. Chapter 1166, Soaring in the Asian Popularity Rankings the opening theme song ended. The applause in the stadium was deafening. As there were still many performances lined up behind them for the opening ceremony, Zhong Yi and Lillian hurried off the stage. When they reached backstage, staff from the organizing committee and program team were already waiting there for them. Ba 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 ba. Someone led the applause for them. You sang wonderfully. Nothing else comes close to this song. It sounded much better than during rehearsal. Teacher Zhong, you're great. Teacher Lillian, thanks for coming here from so far. On behalf of the organizing committee, I thank you for being here. You've both contributed a near-perfect opening theme song for the Beijing Olympics. Professor Zhong, Teacher Lillian, you did a great job. Actually, most of the organizing committee's staff were here for Lillian. They had already received news that she would be flying away from Beijing tomorrow. As an international superstar, Lillian's schedule was packed to the brim, and she was already practically booked well into the next year. This was why they were very grateful to her for pushing back her work to specially fly to Beijing to sing in the Olympics. Lillian and the supervisor shook hands. It's my pleasure. The supervisor from the organizing committee said, I hope we can work together again in the future. Lillian smiled and said, Sure. As there were still many events lined up and work left to be done, the staff members departed very quickly. The opening theme song, You and Me, was the most important segment and had kicked off the opening ceremony to a good start. Many of the organizing committee's people heaved a sigh of relief knowing that the work left was just going to get easier from here. They knew that the Beijing Olympic opening ceremony would surely finish without a hiccup. They should be able to hold a satisfactory performance for the entire world to see. They could hear the music coming on in the stadium from backstage. There were still going to be performances by troops, an all-star combined singing segment, speeches to be given, the Parade of Nations won, and so on and so forth. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Shall we go to the front to watch the ceremony? Lillian shrugged. I'll be leaving on a flight tomorrow. This is my first time visiting China, so I would like to go visit some places. Zhong Yi was taken aback. Whoa, you're leaving this soon. She said, yeah, there's still a lot of work waiting for me. Zhong Yi said, but I haven't even managed to play host to you. Lillian said, why don't you recommend a few places that look pretty at night? What's the point of recommending? Zhong Yi said, I'll bring you around instead. It's not like you know anyone here. Lillian laughed. Sure, then I'll follow you around. Zhong Yi snapped his fingers and said, leave it to me. I'm really familiar with the place. Lillian said with some anticipation in her voice, all right. Let me get changed first. I'll get changed as well, so I'll see you in a bit. I'm going to take you all over the 49 City 2 for your enjoyment. Zhong Yi didn't intend on going around in this stage costume of his either. An hour later. The opening ceremony was still ongoing, and there were still fireworks being launched. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi and Lillian had already gone to Gulu, Wangfujing, and Tiananmen Square 3 during this time. Zhong Yi had changed into a casual outfit of a t-shirt and shorts. In the dark of the night and with his sunglasses on, there was almost no one who could recognize him. Lillian had also changed into her casual wear. She was in a long, white dress and wearing black, 8cm stilettos. But even though it was just an ordinary long dress, it still looked absolutely stunning on her. With her figure that was even better than a model's, and matched with her flaming auburn hair and Caucasian appearance, everyone would definitely do a double take when they saw her. What a beautiful foreigner. Damn, it's a goddess. Ah, is that Lillian? What? Lillian? Heavens! What is she doing here? Is that Zhong Yi beside her? Teacher Zhong. My prince. 
there really were some people who managed to recognize them. Five bodyguards and staffers on Lillian's team immediately came over to stop anyone from getting too close. John Yi and Lillian had no choice but to hurry elsewhere. With such a famous international superstar beside him, there would be no way to move around after being spotted. Zhong Yi smiled and said, you're too famous in this country. Lillian gave him a look and said, I think you're the one who's more famous. Compared to you, what am I? Zhong Yi shrugged. Lillian chuckled. Is that so? Well, at the least, I've heard of you overseas. At this, Zhong Yi was stunned. Ha! Huh? You've heard of me? Lillian lit a cigarette and started smoking in the car. She laughed and said, yes. Curious, Zhong Yi asked, where do you hear about me? Lillian replied, my grandmother mentioned you once. She's from Beijing, and I learned my Mandarin from her. She has been paying attention to you all this time. Zhong Yi was flattered. Thank your grandma for me. Sure, I'll pass the message along when I get back. Lillian smiled. If you ever come to Britain, remember to phone me. I'll definitely take care of you. You're the first friend I made in China. Zhong Yi responded in kind, okay. If you come to China again, I'll arrange everything for you. It was a little too rushed this time, so I couldn't really bring you anywhere fun. Lillian said, you must. That's right, please help me sign a few autographs. Huh? I've been asked to request for some. So you're doing all this with a motive? Of course. I can't just take you around without getting something in return, can I? Ha ha ha, okay. It was getting very late. After getting the autographs and exchanging their numbers, the two fellow smokers cemented their friendship and parted ways. Neither of them knew when they would meet again. It could be soon? Or it could be a long time from now? But they would definitely meet again. Zhong Yi was very confident of that. That was because he knew that he would definitely get to her level someday. He would surely step out from Asia and onto the international stage to stand at the top of the entertainment industry. This was what his goal and beliefs had always been. On the same night, the opening ceremony ended. The news gradually reported on it. A perfect opening ceremony. An opening theme song that earned the praise of the world. Lillian and Zhong Yi dazzle and appear hand in hand. Host slip of tongue while commentating. The different styles of each nation's delegation. Lillian and Zhong Yi spotted smoking at Gulu. Eyewitnesses say that Zhong Yi and Britain's most beautiful woman were seen at Wangfujing. The start of a friendship between Lillian and Zhong Yi? The netizens were commenting on things as always. Lillian's a smoker too? You didn't know. Lillian has always been a smoker. The photos are proof. Foot, these two standing by the roadside and smoking make for the perfect picture. So teacher Jong brought Britain's most beautiful woman out sightseeing? I'm so jealous. I guess Jong Yi's popularity is going to grow again this time? It sure will. He has sung for the entire world. It looks like Jong Yi has reaped the greatest benefit this time at the opening ceremony. He's really too lucky. If it weren't for the Olympic opening ceremony requiring a song change with only a few days to go, the theme song would never have become Zhong Yi's to sing. Then, all the more he wouldn't have had the chance to team up with Lillian for it. Midnight passed. The Chinese celebrity rankings index was updated. The majority of the rankings did not change much. Yu Yi, who was one of the hosts for the opening ceremony, moved up several places in the rankings, while a few celebrities who were part of the all-star singing segment experienced a big boost to their popularity scores. Other than them, Zhong Yi was the one most worth mentioning. He was still in first place on the A-list rankings, but his surge in the popularity score had left the person in second place far in his wake. He was getting closer and closer to becoming a heavenly king of the S-list rankings. However, Zhong Yi's greatest popularity change was on the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index. The moment the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index was updated, a lot of people were completely dumbfounded. Zhong Yi, who had only been in the middle of the Asian C-list rankings, had gone on to be a forerunner on it within one night. He was not far from the Asian B-list rankings. What did this mean? 
it meant that with just one song at the Olympic opening ceremony, in just those four minutes required for the song to be performed, Zhang Yi's popularity score in the Asian region greatly soared. Chapter 1167, The Crowd Goes Ballistic. The next day. It was the first day of the Olympic Games. The staff of Zhang Yi's studio were in a celebratory mood the moment they arrived at work. The studio was established with the core mission and aim of pushing Zhang Yi to a further and higher place in the industry. Everything was centered around Zhang Yi's popularity and image, which was why when Zhang Yi had been selected to sing the Olympic opening theme song after the studio had just been operating for a few days, and with his performance with Lillian being very successful, it helped him leave a good impression on the world's audience and get all-around praise from many people. With that, his popularity in China, as well as Asia, soared. This made the studio staff extremely excited and full of hope for the future. The business operations were also starting to get busy. The phone lines in the studio were ringing non-stop. Some of the calls were from television stations or reporters seeking interviews, and some were invitations to collaborate on all kinds of projects. A little after nine in the morning. John Yi arrived at work. Ha Chichi and the others immediately gave him a status report. The tabulated data and information were given to Zhang Yi with very detailed statistics. This was the advantage of having a team. Director Zhang, your Weibo followers increased by a million overnight. You and me was really successful. The live performance music video has already reached number one on the top Chinese music chart, and the second placed song, Beijing Welcomes You, is also your song. Little Wang exclaimed, Mighty, Mighty Director Zhang. Wu Yi laughed and said, your ranking also went up in the Asian popularity charts. Zhongs was said, yes, a lot of the foreign media has mentioned director Zhongs name in their reports as well. This is quite a historic breakthrough for us, even though it's unlikely that the foreigners will become your fan with just one song. But at least it's good that you've shown yourself on the world stage for a start. Zhong Yi had a look at the statistics and said with a laugh, great work, everyone. Ha Chichi smiled and said, your reputation now is great. All the news reports about you at the moment are fairly positive, so I suggest that we build up your reputation during this period. We have to strike while the iron is hot in order to turn around that past negative image of yours. That will help the media and public change their impression of you. Zhong Yi blinked. Why do that? Zhongs were replied, we analyzed earlier during a meeting that your next target would definitely be to reach the S-list rankings. Only by getting into the highest rankings domestically and becoming a heavenly king can you continue progressing further in the Asian and international scene. Therefore, our target for you is to first get to the top within China. According to past information, all of those who manage to get into the S-list and become heavenly kings and queens have one thing in common. That is, their reputation and public image are all fantastic without an exception. For example, John Yuanchi and the other heavenly kings and queens. It applies to all of them. That was why we concluded that the prerequisite to reaching the S-list rankings was that, and exactly what you're lacking in and also where you're unable to compare to against the heavenly kings and queens. We can work hard toward that target from now on, although it's unlikely that you'll reach that level anytime soon. But at least, we can see whether you can go further with a better reputation and image. Having a team was just different. Zhong Yi nodded in agreement. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Ha Chichi smiled and said, then let's head in this direction with our PR campaigns. If there are any charity or public service events to attend, you'll have to accommodate them for us. Sure, just decide as you will. Zhong Yi did not have any objections. After confirming his direction for the short term, everyone started getting to work. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi made his rounds in the office before subsequently looking at his watch and leaving to drive off. His image? All right then, he would have to watch his public image a little more carefully during this period of time then. On the live broadcast of the Olympics. There was global coverage worldwide. The first day of events had already begun. The Chinese netizens were getting extremely excited. Everyone was looking forward to Team China's performance at the Beijing Olympics. During every previous Olympics, Central TV Sports Channel's viewership rating would outdo all the other programs by a large margin. During this period of time, everyone would only pay attention and have eyes for the Olympic Games. 
Further, it was even held in Beijing this year in their own backyard. As the hosts, everyone's enthusiasm was even greater than it had ever been. There were people who were camping at their televisions, and some who took time off from work to attend the events. On Weibo. Looking forward to the first gold medal. Who will get the first gold? Come on, athletes. There are so many events with a gold medal up for grabs today. Haha, ha, the fencing event has already started. The qualification round for shooting has started as well. I predict that we'll get at least two gold medals on the first day. There's a chance of getting three gold medals too. There are a lot of events that we're good at on this first day. The media was also busy doing a gold medal analysis for China. Shooting? Fencing? Or would it be some of the other events? A lot of those in the media had prepared their reports beforehand. All they were waiting for was for Team China to score their first gold medal on this first day of the events before publishing their news reports. At the live coverage studio of the Olympics. The shooting event was taking place. Commentator Zhao Ji said, Dear viewers and friends, we're about to begin with the women's 10-meter air rifle event one. China's athletes, Qi Shui and Li Chen, placed first and third respectively in the earlier qualification round to qualify for the finals. In the next round of this competition, the first Beijing Olympic gold medalist will be crowned. Can the Chile duo take the first Olympic gold for Team China? Let's wait and see. A former Olympic champion, Zhang Chuxia, was also present in the live coverage studio. Zhao Ji said, the competition is starting. Zhang Chuxia shouted, it's the first shot, come on. Good one. Qi Shui has shot a 10.22. Oh, Li Chen has made a mistake on her first shot. She has only scored 9.2 points for her effort. But that's fine, there's still a chance. The second shot. The fifth shot. The eighth shot. After several more shots, the results were wilder than anyone's expectations. Li Chen was performing very badly today and was no longer in the running for a medal. Meanwhile, Qi Shui had fallen to third place after committing a very serious mistake on one of her shots. She was now 2.1 points away from the first place. Zhao Ji said, things aren't looking too good. Zhang Chuxia said, let's see how the last few shots go. The team has been too nervous. You can do it, Qi Shui. All the way. Whoosh. After the shot was taken, everyone gasped loudly. It was over. The gold medal was no longer possible. In the end, Qi Shui could only manage a bronze. Zhao Ji said, what a pity. Zhang Chuxia sighed, hi, the pressure was too stressful. Watching TV, the home viewers were also crying out in pity. In the next few hours. The mood of the viewers and China's delegation could only be described as being down in the dumps. They lost the shooting gold medal. They lost the fencing gold medal. They also lost the swimming gold medal. First gold still not here. What is wrong with the Chinese team? Only hope of first day gold rests on weightlifting. Go for it. Come on, this is our backyard we're talking about. Don't be too stressed, just do your best. Our weightlifting team should be the favorites for gold, right? Yes, this event should not have any surprises. Come on, get the first gold already. Let's give everyone a boost to their spirits. According to the preliminary statistics, Central TV Sports Channel's Olympics coverage had already reached an astonishing 43% viewership. That was to say, for every 100 televisions in the country, close to half were tuned into the live broadcast of the Olympics. The viewership ratings of the Olympics coverage in other countries around the world were very good as well, and were maintained at a very high level everywhere. If they were to translate the ratings to individual viewership numbers, this would probably be the highest rated Olympics meet in history. And because of that, all the more the Chinese viewers were looking for that gold medal to boost their morale. There was only weightlifting left. They had to win gold. At night. On the live broadcast. A commentator said, we're going to bring you the live coverage of the men's 62 kilograms weightlifting event next. Li Jiaxi, the defending world champion who is representing China, will be taking on the other athletes very soon. In this event, the Chinese athlete has the absolute strength to win. 
but he still has to be very wary of the North Korean athlete, who is expected to be a strong rival. The competition venue was packed to bursting. There were a lot of Chinese flags in the stands and wave after wave of cheers could be heard from the crowd. Zhong Yi was wearing his sunglasses as he arrived late for the event. He had quietly sneaked in through the staff entrance. His third sister waved. Brother. His second sister exclaimed, Aya, why have you only just arrived? Zhong Yi laughed. I was blocked at the entrance by reporters. Has it started already? Soon, his eldest young sister said with a sunken expression. This is the last chance to get a gold medal today. I hope nothing goes wrong. Zhong Yi smiled. Dian said, don't worry, he's got this. His first uncle and aunt said, little Yi, get seated quickly. All right. Zhong Yi sat down. He had actually been at the Olympic venue the entire day. He first brought his parents to watch shooting before taking Chen Chen to catch fencing afterwards. In the end, there were no gold medals won in those events. Zhong Yi was also getting very anxious. Although the country's obsession with getting gold was somewhat extreme, this was still a competition after all, so who wouldn't wish to win a gold medal here? Zhong Yi shouted, Come on. The people around him also started shouting. You can do it. Go Li Jiashi. Get our first gold medal. We're depending on you. The live broadcast cameras suddenly turned to face Zhong Yi. In the live coverage studio, both of the commentators were laughing. Haha, they've given Zhong Yi a profile shot. We can see that teacher Zhong has also brought his family to watch the events. Oh, there's someone there wearing a hat. If I'm not wrong, that should be the singer, Han Fang. Eh, director he is here too? Look. He's nodding at Zhong Yi. Looks like our celebrities are also very concerned about the Olympics. It's starting. They're going to begin with the Snatch 3. The first one up is the South Korean athlete. The second to go will be the Australian athlete. After several people, it was finally the Chinese team's turn. Oh, it's Li Jiash's first lift and he's already trying for 162 kilograms. Let's see how this goes. Come on. Li Jiashi. You can do it. Good one, now lift it up. Great. The entire venue was cheering. Zhong Yi shouted, good showing. The three sisters were also shouting excitedly. Oh, the North Korean athlete upped the weight to 166 kilograms and has succeeded in lifting it as well. Li Jiashi will also be attempting 166 kilograms this time, but the snatch is not what he's good at. Let's see how this one goes. Oh. He did it. He succeeded. The crowd erupted into applause again. The two commentators' startled and surprised reactions made the viewers watching the live coverage feel extremely jittery as well. When the snatch was completed, Li Jiashi and the North Korean athlete tied on weight lifted and advanced into the clean and jerk tied for first place. Li Jiashi's first clean and jerk ended unsuccessfully before he managed a 190 kg lift on his second attempt. Meanwhile, the North Korean athlete actually requested to lift a weight that seemed impossible for him on his third attempt, 190 kilograms. In all his previous competitions, he had never attempted such a weight. John Yi's third sister cursed, I hope it drops and crushes his feet. Crush his feet. John Yi said to her, Whoa, you're really ruthless. The third lift was also going to be the North Korean athlete's final lift. He only had this one chance to succeed. The North Korean athlete grappled with the bar and brought it up to his chest. The enormous weight was pressing against him so heavily that he was trembling. It was obvious that he was almost about to give way. But suddenly, the North Korean athlete exerted his strength and jerked the bar over his head. However, his hands were not steady and his legs kept wobbling about. After bracing for a moment, he dropped the bar onto the ground. The commentator said agitatedly, he didn't hold still. The former weightlifting champion said, we've won, we're the champion, but at this moment, the North Korean athlete suddenly jumped up excitedly and let out a howl on screen. He rushed off the stage to his coach, and they shared a hug. The commentator said in surprise, what happened? 
the former weightlifting champion said in disbelief, what? The referees gave a single red light and two white lights for for the result. Did he succeed? The North Korean athlete managed the lift. If the North Korean athlete also succeeded in lifting 190 kilograms, then with their attempts being the same weight and his body weight being lighter than Lee Jiaxi's, he would get the victory. The crowd at the venue was stunned. The Chinese team's coaches were also stunned. One of the coaches was so mad that he immediately went to appeal the result. However, the weightlifting event for this Olympics did not allow for appeals. The referee sent the Chinese coach back to where he came from. The commentator said, what an extremely odd call that was. The former weightlifting champion said, yeah, it's simply unbelievable. The commentator said, but Li Jiaxi still has a chance. If he can manage to lift 191 kilograms for his final attempt, he'll still be crowned as the champion. Go Li Jiaxi. Come on, Team China. All of the pressure was now on Li Jiaxi. The next second, Li Jiaxi took to the stage with the entire crowd cheering for him. Standing in front of the bar, Li Jiaxi roared to encourage himself. Then he squatted down and gripped the bar. He clenched his teeth and adjusted his breathing. Up! The commentator said, good one, now bring it up. The former weightlifting champion shouted, come on. The commentator said loudly, bring it up. Bring it up. Li Jiaxi cleanly jerked and raised the barbell over his head. But as it was incredibly heavy, his legs slightly gave way under him. For a moment, he did not manage to stand still. After he adjusted his footing a little, he held the position. He trembled as he held the bar over him and stayed in that position for two seconds. The crowd went crazy. Zhong Yi said, he's won. His eldest younger sister's eyes were brimming with tears. He's won. We won. The director and singer in the stands also stood up and yelled. The commentator became even more excited. He's won. Li Jiaxi managed to withstand all that pressure and succeeded. He withstood, the commentator was suddenly stunned. What? Wait a moment. What's happening? The entire venue fell silent. The referees seemed like they were discussing something. Then the North Korean athlete and coaches jumped for joy and hugged as they cheered. The Chinese athlete, Li Jiaxi, stood there looking stunned. For his lift, two of the three referees gave a red light. It was a failed lift. This lift did not succeed. The referee team consisting of an Australian, a South Korean, and a Canadian had given a judgment that dumbfounded everyone. The North Korean athlete had won the gold medal. Lee Jiaxi could only come in second. Third place went to an Australian athlete. This was also a breakthrough for Australia in weightlifting. The Chinese coaching team was enraged as they rushed up to the referees. The crowd was furious as they started yelling angrily. Mother heckers. What the hell are they doing? What kind of judgment is this? Are you all playing dirty now? The central TV commentator also exclaimed, what's going on here? Can anyone tell me what's going on? The former weightlifting champion said angrily, this has got to be an incorrect call. This doesn't make any sense at all. Let's see how their negotiation goes. The organizing committee's people have joined in the discussion as well. At the referees panel in the venue, the referees were whispering to each other. The Australian referee kept waving his hand. The South Korean referee also looked like he was saying something. Finally, the outcome was decided. The referees did not change their decision. The North Korea athlete roared and beat against his chest to show that he was the champion. Lee Jiaxi could only walk off the stage silently. His eyes reddened as tears flowed down his face. The commentator said, a man does not cry easily. But at this moment, our Olympic hero is crying here in Beijing. We don't know what we can say anymore. The former Olympic champion said, this is too unreasonable. If the referees were being strict and insisted that Lee Jiaxi's lift was against the rules, then that lift by the North Korean athlete would be a 100% against the rules too. It just doesn't make any sense to have different standards for different athletes. What's with that? What are the referees doing? The commentator sighed. The results have been decided. 
we must accept this outcome. But the former Olympic champion said, I can't accept this. If this was because of us not being good enough, then such a result would be fine. If we have been erratic in our performance today, we can also let that go. But tell me, what's with this? I really can't accept something like this. I believe that many others are feeling the same too. The live coverage was still being broadcast. There was still the medal ceremony to be held later on. Suddenly, Zhong Yi stood up and pointed at the referees, yelling, idiots. This voice was so loud that it was deafening within the enclosed area of the arena. That famous television drama director, He Chidong, also stood up when he heard that. Idiots. The singer, Han Fang, scolded, idiots. Zhong Yi's second sister, idiots. His third sister, idiots. More and more people started standing up. More and more of them pointed at the referees and scolded them in anger. At this moment, all the Chinese in the stands were enraged. The infamous Peking University scolding was now echoing in an Olympic setting. That Australian referee looked over to the stands, knowing that the crowd was scolding them. However, he just smiled and did not say anything. The South Korean referee also had an indifferent look, while the other referees also behaved like nothing had happened. After the competition ended, they even started chatting and laughing with one another. This behavior made the Chinese people even angrier. They clearly had something against the Chinese team. For a time, the scolding in the stands got even louder. Idiots. 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 When Zhong Yi's eldest younger sister saw Li Jiaxi crying, she nearly cried as well. This is so infuriating. I'm so pissed off. Isn't that as good as bullying? They can't do things like that. What kind of temper did Zhong Yi have? This fellow was someone who would blow up at the slightest provocation. He hated this sort of injustice the most in life. These foreign bastards. Not far away from him, director He Chidong said, they're doing this on purpose. This judgment call was simply too blatant. There was basically no way it could have been an incorrect judgment. Heck their grandpas. How dare they act in this way? All right then. Zhong Yi turned around and stomped off. He simply said to his uncle and auntie, as well as his three sisters, I'm going outside for a bit. Where are you off to? Brother? His three sisters were also quite taken aback by this. In the blink of an eye, Zhong Yi had walked out of the competition venue. If it were a matter of skills, it would have been fine. If this Olympics were held in another country, then so be it. But this was Beijing. This was the Beijing Olympics. Chapter 1168, The Referees Get Beaten Up. Meanwhile, some countries were celebrating their victories. Some countries were reflecting on their results. But the Chinese delegation and the common folk of the country were all enraged by the men's 62 kilograms weightlifting event. Even most of the media outlets in China were annoyed at the results. China ends first day of events without gold medal. The Chinese delegation repeatedly misses out on gold. An incorrect call in weightlifting? Li Jiaxi painfully loses the gold medal. Team China's gold medal stolen by referees. A failed appeal? Did the refs go blind? The Australian referee had already made an incorrect call against a Chinese athlete four years ago. For years ago, it was Ding Lei. This time, it's Li Jiaxi? Just how has Team China offended this Australian referee? The weightlifting medal presentation had not even begun yet, but the news reports were already spreading everywhere. Central TV's live coverage had switched from the venue to broadcasting the live coverage studio. The scene of the audience scolding, idiots, in unison at the venue was really unsuitable to continue being shown on live television. The venue was very chaotic. The weightlifting team's head coach had already gone to the organizing committee's officials to lodge a complaint. This Olympics was organized by them, but to have the foreign referees so blatantly and deliberately make such misjudgments on the first day of the events, who could bear it? They were clearly smacking their faces. They were clearly smacking China's face. The first day events of the Olympics had ended. When the many coaches and athletes of the different sports for Team China heard about this incident, they all went to watch the replay of the weightlifting event. 
then many of them started to step forward in anger. The table tennis team's main players posted on Weibo, Li Jiashi deserved to be the champion. The badminton team's assistant head coach criticized sternly, Li Jiashi did not lose because of himself or his opponent, but because of the referees. The men's weightlifting team's coach, strongly questioning this decision. And celebrities from all over spoke up too. Yao Jiantsai's Weibo, this is goddamn match fixing. Hua Dongfang's Weibo, this corruption is too blatant, isn't it? Chen Guang's Weibo, what the hell is this? Famous director. Li Ku, this is the Beijing Olympics. Do you have any respect for us? Shouldn't they ban these types of referees? Grandma Zhongxia, why couldn't they initiate an appeal against the decision? The Chinese athletes were all criticizing it. The celebrities were all criticizing it. The netizens were also criticizing it. Bastards! How can they be such bullies? Did they gang up on us? I'm so angry. That was such a shocking and maddening decision. For years ago, there were already issues raised about some of the referees deliberately targeting our Chinese team. At that time, the relevant organization penalized them for their actions. So why is it that a portion of those people can still appear in the Olympics ref pool? How can they blatantly cheat the Chinese team of its chances like this? Who gave them the authority to do something like that? Who allowed this to happen and condoned their actions that have seriously damaged the spirit of sportsmanship? Such referees should be banned for life. Heck! This is really making me want to beat someone up now. Even an idiot can see that we were the ones who should have won. That last lift was a proper one. There was nothing wrong with it. Well scolded, John Yi. They're really a bunch of idiots. I also saw John Yi leading the scolding on the live broadcast. What's the use of scolding them? The gold medal has already been lost. This is too difficult to stomach. When Li Jiashi cried on the live broadcast. My wife cried along. This is too depressing. My heart aches for him. This incorrect call was very controversial. Whether it was the Chinese delegation or the citizens, none of them were having it. Some foreign media outlets also gave a very objective assessment after watching the competition. A British media outlet reported, unable to understand the decision behind the men's 62 kg weightlifting event. It looked like the winner should have been the Chinese. In the Spanish media, a huge controversy in the weightlifting event. After viewing the slow motion replays, the North Korean athletes' lift at the end clearly ran afoul of the rules. Meanwhile, the Chinese athletes' lift was thought to be a good one after analysis by several professionals. All of them said that there were no issues with it and that it should not have been faulted. The Portuguese media, in the finals of the weightlifting event, the referees made a big mistake. However, the gold medal has already been awarded and won't be changed. The Russian media, after four years, the Chinese weightlifting team has again fallen victim to the same Australian referee in the finals of a different weight class. A lot of the foreign media also expressed their shock and disbelief at the matter. This sort of a clear-cut incorrect call could only be committed by an amateur referee. How could something like this happen in the Olympics? But the award ceremony was already over. The gold medal winner could not be changed. That was this world's rules for the sport of weightlifting. Yet at this time, the Australian media continued adding fuel to fire. An Australian media outlet said openly, the Chinese audience is making a spectacle of themselves in the stadium by verbally abusing the referees. Such behaviour makes us very worried about this year's Beijing Olympics. The outcome of the competition cannot be changed, and this is what it means to compete in a sporting event. The results are unpredictable, so why don't they try to accept it and learn from their mistakes? After the competition, an Australian reporter interviewed the Australian athlete who won the bronze medal. The athlete shook his head and expressed, I'm very disappointed with the behaviour of the Chinese today. They delayed the proceedings of the competition for so long just because they couldn't take a loss. I think we should be the ones protesting instead. That made a lot of people even more furious. On Weibo, there were wave after wave of criticism. They even want us to just accept it? Heck your grandpa. The Australian ref deliberately made a bad call against us and they're asking us to learn from our mistakes? Heck your grandpa. 
P2E. What dog's hit is this? Ah. Uh. I'm so mad. I'm gonna blow my top. They're being way too arrogant. The incident blew up. But other than cursing and swearing, the athletes, coaches, and citizens could do nothing about it. They were all full of pent-up anger that could not be released anywhere. A similar scene had happened four years ago. At that time, after the gold medal was lost, the incident died down after some time. Could the same thing happen again at this year's Beijing Olympics? The referees would just be let off with a pointless warning and punishment before everything went back to how it was? Of course, this affair was not over yet. Even if everyone else agreed to it, Zhong Yi wouldn't. Night had fallen. But the lights were still shining brightly within the Olympic Stadium. Zhong Yi used his special staff pass that was issued to him for yesterday's opening ceremony to gain access to the place through the staff entrance. He strode into the area where the crowds were not allowed to enter. Even though the competition events for the day were over, this place was still restricted. Across from him at the exit of the stadiums, five referees were walking out. The leader of the group was that Australian referee who took charge of the weightlifting event earlier. Beside him were the other foreign referees involved in today's event. Hash dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Percent dollar carrot and asterisk. They were saying something, probably in English, but Zhong Yi could not understand them as they spoke very fast. Well, with that English of his, he probably would not understand even if they spoke slowly. The Australia referee was beaming. The South Korean referee had a calm look on his face. Beside them, there was a referee who looked a little worried. All of them wore different expressions and were heading out of the stadium toward Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi did not even look at them as he slowly strode in their direction swinging his arms. He was even humming and singing the song, Beijing Welcomes You. The atmosphere felt really normal. The workers and volunteers who were passing by did not sense anything peculiar either. It was the same for those weightlifting referees. The Australian referee suddenly took a look at his watch before saying something in English to the others. The five of them nodded and quickly picked up their pace. They probably had to rush off somewhere as there was still a lot of work to be done post-competition. But right as they were passing John Yi. They were passing him but did not make it past him. John Yi was still humming the tune when he suddenly stuck his leg out. The Australian referee, who was walking very quickly, didn't even have time to react and tripped. He lost his balance and felt like his body's weight was arrested as he fell forward. He yelled while flailing about, hoping to grab onto something. As a result, he grabbed onto the South Korean referee beside him and pulled him down as well. Then another referee, who was behind them, knocked into Zhong Yi's shoulder, accidentally. He felt a very strong impact collide with his shoulder as he fell over with a horrified look, and landed on top of the other two referees without warning. The Australian referee's face smashed against the ground. His nose instantly started bleeding. The South Korean referee fell over as well and his arm snapped against the ground. He clutched it and shrieked in pain. The third referee fell onto his back. The fourth referee was knocked into a table next to him. After the fifth referee fell down, he even got crushed under two other referees who were clearly heavier than 80 kilograms. His eyes rolled back as he nearly fainted from the pain. One second. In just a mere second. As they passed each other. Only Zhong Yi made it past them while the five referees cried out loudly as they found themselves sprawled out on the ground. None of them stood back up. It was too fast. It was really did happen in just the blink of an eye. It was so strange it was scary. When many of the volunteers and workers, as well as some of the other foreign referees and athletes around them, heard their screams, many of them either looked over to see what was going on or rushed over. Damn. What happened here? The weightlifting referees got beaten up. Several female volunteers screamed. Meanwhile, John Yi's figure had drifted away. All that was left of the incident was a chaotic crowd that had gathered around the five weightlifting referees wailing in agony. Chapter 1169, the surveillance footage gets brought to light. It was extremely chaotic on site. The five referees were lying on the ground all swollen and bruised. They were wailing and in so much pain they could not get back up on their feet. All of them had been stunned by the fall. Ah. 
Heck. My leg. Help. Help. The Australian referee was crying out for help. However, just as the volunteers and Chinese athletes around were about to instinctively help him up, they realized who he was and stopped in their tracks. Instead, they took out their cell phones to record the dumbfounded weightlifting referees. The refs got beaten up. They're the referees from the weightlifting event. Quick, come and see this. Record it. Damn, who did this? The security guards came running over as well. Some employees on the organizing committee also rushed over. What's going on? How did something like this happen? What went on over here? Hurry, help them up first. Where's the medical staff? Let them have a look. They're fine, they didn't suffer any fractures. More and more people gathered. Even some of the media arrived to take a look. Everyone who saw it could only feel a sense of shock and disbelief. This was an Olympic venue, a place with the highest security. How could something like this have happened? How could do it? Who could be so brazen? Who could be so bold? The media was dumbfounded. The organizing committee staff were dumbfounded. The local and foreign athletes were dumbfounded. Beating up referees at an Olympic venue? No one had come across something like this before. Back at home. His parents were cursing at the television. His father said, good thing we didn't go watch the weightlifting event tonight, else I'd have been so pissed off. His mother said, those foreigners are such bastards. How dare they pick on us in our backyard? Who gave them the guts to do that? Who gave them the authority? The criticism on the internet was still going on. The entertainment industry was criticizing it. The Chinese media was criticizing it. The netizens were criticizing it. Is there no place to reason this out? These people should just die. Brothers, let's dox one those fellas. Someone's already identified those five refs. Heck, who wants to go with me to confront them? Heck. Let's go hecking beat them up. Yeah, we won't take this lying down. Count me in. I'll go as well. I've really been enraged today. Go? How are we going to go? That is a restricted area in the Olympic grounds. Can any of you even make it inside? So we're just going to do nothing about it then? Ever since the weightlifting event finished, the people cursed and scolded, for a full hour. But all of a sudden, countless news reports appeared. It had come so suddenly all the netizens were caught unawares. Everyone was tongue-tied. Five weightlifting referees assaulted. An unexpected incident in an Olympic stadium. Referees fall and injure themselves, or perhaps it was caused by someone else. Police investigating. Could the surveillance footage shed a light on what really happened? Just what happened in the stadium? On Central TV Sports Channel, oh, we have just received a piece of news. Beijing Television, an incident has taken place in an Olympic stadium. Let's take a look at a video footage. A video recorded at the scene was shown. The five weightlifting referees who were earlier on television in all their swagger looked miserable in the video clip. Some of them were bleeding from the nose, and some of them had bumps on their heads as all of them laid on the ground crying out in pain. With this, it became very lively on Weibo. In an instant, the video clip was liked over 200,000 times. The netizens were so delighted they seemed to be welcoming the new year. Wow. Ha 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 ha. This is too awesome. Serves them right. They hecking deserved it. What goes around comes around. Who does heaven forgive? What a release. This is such a goddamn release. Ayo, I'm laughing like crazy. This feels so good. Damn, the referees got beaten up in an Olympic stadium? I thought that place was out of bounds to the regular people. Who beat them up then? Just what is going on here? Let me like this a million times first before I go check it out. Could it have been a volunteer who did it? Ha ha. All I want to say is. Well done. Which hero did this? Let us prostrate in worship to that person. That was too goddamn brilliant. This is the greatest piece of news I've seen this year. 
Yao Jiansai liked the Weibo video. Ha ha. Zhongxia gave it a like too. Zhong Yuanqi's manager also hit like. Hua Dongfang liked it. A heavenly king liked it. A certain heavenly queen posted a winking emoticon in response. The Beijing Times forwarded the post. The official Weibo of a Beijing district police station liked and forwarded it before immediately deleting all traces of both. The people did not have much qualms about their reactions to the incident, but the entertainment industry celebrities and officials had to be careful about what they did or said. That was because they were public figures and anything they said could be seen as wrong. But they were also using their own methods to express their attitudes regarding the incident. John Yi's father was startled. The referees were beaten up? His mother yelled in approval, well done. Well done. How truly satisfying. The incident made so many people feel very happy. Although there were also many experts and media putting on a show by stepping forward to criticize such actions, the general public was not bothered. Everyone was just intrigued by who could have done this and if it was done by one of the volunteers or workers. Or perhaps, one of the Chinese athletes or coaches. The foreign media was also giving a lot of attention to this matter. Police investigating and checking surveillance footage. According to eyewitness accounts, no fighting in the stadium. Injured referees lodge complaint to organizing committee. Were they beaten up? Or was it just an accident? The truth shall be revealed soon. Later that night. At John Yi's studio. John Yi drove back here hastily. When he came in through the door, he saw that Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others were actually still in the office. They were all chattering and watching television. Zhong Yi was taken aback. Whoa, working overtime? Ha Chichi quickly said, Ayo, Director Zhong, why did you get back this late? Zhongs were said in a good mood, we just saw some news that made all of us so happy that we don't intend to go home yet. This wouldn't be included in the overtime pay, right? Zhong Yi said stingily. Why are you bringing up overtime pay, Director Zhong? You're too much of a penny pincher. Little Wang said joyfully, have you watched the news yet? Something big has just happened. Those weightlifting referees got injured. Zhong Yi shrugged and said, of course I know. Wu Yi laughed heartily. They're currently investigating which hero did it. That was so cool. Little Wang said, I hope the surveillance cameras did not manage to record anything. Otherwise, that person might get into trouble. If it's an athlete from our country, they're likely to get banned from competing. Zhong Yi laughed and said, don't worry, an athlete didn't do it. Ha Chichi immediately said, Director Zhong, quickly go and give the Weibo post a like. We're currently working on gaining you a good public image, so you shouldn't miss out on latching onto an opportunity like this. Zhongs were nodded. That's right, you should say a few words on your Weibo or at least post a status update. But Zhong Yi waved it off. No need. Why not? Ha Chichi was taken aback. Suddenly, the scene on Central TV's live broadcast changed. It was still showing a recap of today's Olympic Games events before it cut back to the studio. Then the host said, we interrupt this broadcast to report that we have just received an important update on the injured referees. We have gotten our hands on footage that will reveal what happened at the scene. The video footage was shown on the broadcast. The country's citizens were jolted. Who did it? Quick, let's have a look. At present, the number of people watching and waiting in anticipation was uncountable. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others also crowded around the television. Then, the figures of five referees appeared in the surveillance footage, the exact ones who had been injured in the incident. They could be seen walking in a hurry and were even chatting and joking with one another. The next second, a key figure appeared in frame. As the two sides approached each other, right as they were passing each other, what happened was not as described by the news involving a violent beating or a fight scene as imagined by everyone. It happened in a flash just as they passed each other. The young man in the surveillance footage maliciously stretched out a leg to trip one of them. The next instant, the country's citizens were dumbfounded as they saw the five referees chaotically fall to the ground. The young man had his hand in his pockets and even sounded like he was humming a song. The surveillance footage then got a close-up shot of the young man, 
leading to everyone in the country reacting like they had their tails stepped on. Hachichi turned around in shock. Little Wang shrieked. Zhang Zhuangui also stared in shock at Zhang Yi, who was standing behind them. It was Director Zhang. The person in the footage was actually Director Zhang. Everyone in Zhang Yi's studio nearly fainted. Ha Chichi stood up by supporting herself with the table. Director Zhang, it was you? Zhang Zhuo was nearly in tears. Director Zhang, didn't we already agree on generating a positive public image for you? We just talked about it this morning. Zhang Yi was also feeling a little embarrassed. I was too impulsive. Ha Chichi said angrily, no, you did it knowingly. Zhang Yi gave a hollow laugh. You all should already know this temper of mine. I won't do it again. Everyone in the studio could only give each other looks and sigh. All right then, it looked like they would really have to get back to work and put in some overtime. They should have known better that it wouldn't be that easy being a part of Zhong Yi's management team. Everyone in Zhong Yi's studio smiled bitterly as they prepared to welcome the impending storm. Chapter 1170, The Leg of God At Zhong Yi's parents' house. His parents were watching the news in high spirits. It's been revealed. They're showing the surveillance footage. A. Hey, doesn't this person's back look a little familiar? Damn, isn't that little Yi? His parents were stunned. In the Olympic Village. Many of the athletes and coaches were watching the live broadcast as well. Beautiful. That was such a godly trip. Ah. John Yi. Heck, it's John Yi. All over the country, scenes of people getting dumbfounded were playing out. When they saw that figure of a person and John Yi's face, when they saw that malicious leg stick out, everyone wore a look of shock at first, before it turned to one of amusement. Everyone realized that they were not surprised at all. The person who did it was Zhong Yi. That was perfectly within expectations for him. Zhong Yi had more than enough past cases when it came to such disreputable behavior. He had always been a person whom everyone hated and loved at the same time. Weibo exploded once again. But this time, the netizens were all one-sidedly giving their likes to Zhong Yi. Ayo, what the heck? It's teacher Zhong. Ah. Uh. It's Zhong Yi. This is cracking me up. I was wondering who had the balls to attack the referees in an Olympic stadium. Yeah. I was rather shocked to know that there was a hero who took things into their own hands. So it turned out to be teacher Zhong. I'll give him a like. I'll give teacher Zhong a year's worth of likes for that. I've watched the video five times. It's so awesome. That leg trip was simply perfect. Tripping five people over with a leg. Oh my god. How did Zhong Yi manage that? Who knows? That leg trip was just too godly, damn it. How shocking. This is the goddamn leg of God. The leg he stretched out in the video was too wicked and too precise. It was like he had used a computer to accurately work out the required force and execution angles, as he lightly tripped one of them to send all five referees sprawling out onto the ground. It really dumbfounded countless viewers. Even many of the foreigners had been shocked by this video clip. If there was a tripping event in the Olympics, then this person would definitely deserve to be the champion. Have you ever seen anyone who could trip five people with just a light swipe of their leg? This leg was simply. Yes. It was the leg of God. As John Yi had played that amazing hand of God during the war between humans and machines against Peter Go, the audience got their inspiration from there and aptly gave a resounding name to this move, the leg of God. It was so awesome. It was quite the release. Teacher Zhong is so impressive. As expected of Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi, I just love that fiery temper of yours. Zhong Yi is so domineering. I've always scolded Zhong Yi in the past, but I must give him a like today. There's nothing to say. That leg trip was too good. Zhong Yi put his leg out and tripped them for our nation. He tripped them with such style. You can see how good he is just from that trip alone. Ha 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 ha. I knew it must be him. Who else could do something like this other than Zhong Yi? No one else would have the guts besides him. This is what I call a real man. 
Just with that trip alone, I'll only be convinced by Zhong Yi in showbiz. Aya, don't cause any more trouble. Why aren't you guys worried for teacher Zhong? The police are investigating the affair. This is very serious, so teacher Zhong better not get implicated somehow. Previous poster, stay calm. Ha ha, what are you so worried about? Zhong Yi has done so many things in the past that are even more extreme than this, but have you ever seen that fellow get into any trouble? He's still doing as well as ever. It's not like he's beaten anyone up. He only tripped one of them, what's the big deal? Teacher Zhong has been through a lot, so don't worry about him. He knows what he's doing. Do you take him for a pushover? But it'll still affect his image. Does he have an image to begin with? But if the foreigners start criticizing him? You're so funny, big sis. This is Zhong Yi we're talking about. When has Zhong Yi ever been afraid of anyone criticizing him? He's just like a rock in the privy, hard and stinky. All right, I'll stop worrying. There was a heated discussion on the internet. Though to be more accurate, everyone was delighted at the reveal. Meanwhile, the media reports could not possibly be so blasé. Even if some of the Chinese reporters were applauding this action, they couldn't write that in their reports. The Chinese media, Zhong Yi appears in surveillance footage. The British media, the culprit is the singer of the Olympic opening theme song. The Australian media, shock. Indignation. Objection. The South Korean media, was the Chinese superstar retaliating? The Canadian media, unbelievable. A never before witnessed behavior. The Chinese people were not surprised as they all understood Zhong Yi very well. But the foreigners were very dumbfounded. No one could imagine that the Chinese celebrity who had represented Beijing, to sing at the opening ceremony with Lillian would actually trip someone over like this. What the hell was that? What kind of a person was he? And what did he hecking sing in the opening theme song? You and me, from one world. We are family. From one world, your sister. We are family, your sister. Why was what you sang and what you did an entirely different thing altogether? Now that they listened to the song again, it really made many of the foreign media and athletes unsure about how to react. When those injured weightlifting referees saw the video, they finally understood why they had been injured and how they had fallen down. They became so indignant they immediately lodged a complaint and protested to the higher-ups. They requested for the assailant to be seriously punished so that they could be given a fair answer. However, the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games did not show any indication of issue them with one and only said that the matter had already been referred to the police. Sensing that the organizing committee was not proactive on the issue, the five referees became furious. But if they stopped to think for a bit, they were the ones who had deliberately done something as insulting as making an incorrect call in an event at the Beijing Olympics that caused the Chinese team to lose a gold medal. That had affected the Chinese athletes physically and psychologically. The citizens were also angered that this decision was not made in the spirit of sportsmanship. Now that something has happened to you all, you're demanding that the organizing committee give you a fair answer. You are demanding for an explanation to be given? Does that make any sense? Aren't you all expecting a little too much? Do you all think that the world revolves around you? Further, this issue had nothing to do with the organizing committee. Who was John Yi? A coach? He wasn't. An athlete? He wasn't. He wasn't even a worker here. Zhong Yi was not under their jurisdiction at all. He wasn't an official of the Olympics and had only come to perform the Olympic opening theme song as a guest, so anything after that had nothing to do with them. If they really wanted to say anything, then he would at most be considered as a normal audience member. What authority could the organizing committee possibly have over him? So those referees could only pin their hopes on the police. A lot of people were also curious about how the police would handle this matter. In the studio. There was a knock on the door, and they saw four police officers standing outside. Little Wang's expression changed. You all are? The old policeman who was in charge showed his credentials and said sternly, Hello, we're from the Chaoyang District Police Station, is Zhong Yi around? We would like to ask him some questions. Zhong Yi walked up to them. I'm here. The old policeman nodded at him. 
Hello. Regarding the incident that took place at one of the Olympic venues today, we have identified that you were involved after checking the surveillance footage. Is that correct? Zhong Yi said, it was me. Ha Chichi immediately said, please talk to our lawyer about this. We won't be answering any questions for now. But Zhong Yi waved her off. It's fine. Then, he said to the police officers, ask away. The old policeman said, thank you for your cooperation. Zhong Yi smiled. It's my duty. The old policeman asked another question. At 8.10 p.m. tonight, did you go to Olympic venue number 3 because you lost your way? Or did you go there for other reasons? Zhong Yi answered honestly, I went there to look for the five referees, of course. Director Zhong. Ha Chichi tugged at him. The old policeman acknowledged him and turned to the policeman beside him who was recording the statement. He lost his way. That young policeman nodded and recorded it. Zhong Yi. The studio staff. The old policeman looked at him. In the surveillance footage, you were seen sticking your leg out. Was it intentional? Or unintentional? Did you trip over something on the ground? And lost your balance thus making you stick your leg out to steady yourself? Zhong Yi spoke the truth, I definitely did it on purpose. I was there for them. Okay. The old policeman turned to the younger policeman and said, he tripped over something at the time, so he stuck out his leg as he tried to regain his balance. The young policeman recorded the statement. Zhong Yi. Ha Chichi. Zhong Zhuo. Five minutes later, the police were done with their questioning. They had recorded a statement that was completely different from what Zhong Yi answered. The old policeman said, there wouldn't be any criminal liability for this issue. Those referees did not suffer any serious injuries. It was mostly just scraped skin and the like. The surveillance footage wasn't that clear either. At most, you'd be asked to cough up the medical expenses as compensation, but that wouldn't cost much anyway. All right, if there are any new developments to the case, we might come over again or ask you to come down to the police station to assist with the investigation. Since we're done questioning, that's all for today. We won't be disturbing you all any longer. We still have other matters waiting for us to handle when we get back. Ha Chichi hurriedly said, let me see you all off. There's no need, the old policeman said with a smile. Ha Chichi whispered, thank you. The old policeman waved at her. We're just doing our jobs. There's nothing to thank me for. We're off then. As Ha Chichi was the head of external affairs in the studio, she walked the police officers downstairs and saw them off from there. Chapter 1171, International Buzz. In the studio. The calls came one after another. Everyone in the studio was busy handling the media reporters while Zhong Yi took calls from his family and friends. The affair had blown up and no one did not know about it. Zhong Yi held his cell phone to his ear. Mom. His mother praised, son, that was a good beating you gave them. Zhong Yi smiled and said, not bad, right? What's so good about that? At the other end of the line, his father apparently snatched the phone for himself and said, you are a member of the party. How can you go around beating up people again? And they're even Olympic referees? Zhong Yi gave a hollow laugh and said, but I didn't beat them up. His mother snatched the phone back from his father and said, don't listen to your father's griping. When he heard that the referees were injured, he happily applauded it and cheered. He only got anxious after he saw that it was you in the surveillance video. Ignore him, you did a great job. We can't get pushed around by them like this. Zhong Yi replied, got it. Will you be fine? What could possibly happen to me? All righty then. Then Ning Lan called. Ning Lan asked, did you really manhandle them? Zhong Yi replied, let me make this clear, I did not use my hands on them. It's the same even if you used your legs. Cough cough. You've gotten into big trouble this time. Ha, huh, being unafraid of trouble is in my nature. I really have to give it to you. Another call came in, this time from the songstress, Grandma Zhong Xia. Zhong Xia asked, don't you want to make it in the international scene? Zhong Yi said, I want to. You want to? 
then why are you still always getting into trouble? Don't worry about me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, you. I don't even know what to say about you anymore. Zhong Yi's friends called him out of concern as they were afraid he had gotten himself into deep trouble this time. But at the same time, they were really impressed by his courage to do something like this. If it were anyone else, they wouldn't have done something that would land themselves in this kind of trouble, more so for a person of Zhong Yi's stature. What mattered most to those in the entertainment industry was their own reputation, especially those who wanted to advance in the international scene. This incident would definitely stain his reputation for the rest of his life and would not be forgotten by anyone. It was already very difficult for Zhong Yi to advance to the top of the domestic entertainment industry with his qualities, so it would be even harder to get to the top of the Asian rankings and advance in the international stage. And yet, he still created this big of a mess. Wasn't he just making things difficult for himself? Wasn't this as good as putting obstacles on his future career path? But how did Zhong Yi see it? He didn't care at all. He just went ahead and did it. Just by that alone, they had no choice but take their hats off to him. Before long, the findings of the police investigation were released. Chaoyang District Police Station, through our investigation, the suspicious man who appeared in the surveillance footage taken at the Olympic venue was indeed Zhong Yi. The preliminary judgment of the police department is that Zhong Yi entered the Olympic venue to return the staff pass, as he did not have the opportunity to do so after the opening ceremony ended the day before. In there, he got tripped by an unidentified object on the ground just as he was walking past the five foreign weightlifting referees. After comparison with the surveillance footage, Zhong Yi does appear to have lost his balance at that moment and kickstarted a domino effect, where the five foreign referees fell to the ground after one of them was tripped by him. And on and on it went. The findings of the investigation went over 300 words. But the conclusion was summarized in just a word, accident. When the findings of the investigation were made public, many of the local citizens greatly praised it. Giving a like for the Chaoyang police. Ha 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 ha. Well done. The police are serving the people. They know how to spot right from wrong. That's right, it was just an accident. This case was judged wonderfully. That's right, that's right. It had nothing to do with Teacher Zhong. They're exceedingly right. I know that with Teacher Zhong's character, he would definitely not injure the referees at the Olympics venue on purpose. Teacher Zhong would never do something like that. Correct, he's a triple faculty professor of Peking University and Media College. He's an out and out intellectual. That's right, that's right. Teacher Zhong is a teacher of the people and a member of the party. How could he possibly do such a thing? We can't malign a good person. The police have finally cleared Teacher Zhong's name. The injustice has been redressed. A teacher of the people would not beat people up. Hi, the truth finally comes out. Teacher Zhong was wronged. My tears are overflowing. I'm so happy for Teacher Zhong. The people were talking about how righteous the outcome of the investigation was. But in reality, all of them were laughing their asses off on the inside. The injustice was redressed. They were happy for him. A teacher of the people would not beat people up. Bull hecking shit. Everyone knew in their heart of hearts that even an idiot could see that this was done by Zhong Yi on purpose. He wouldn't do something like that. If he wouldn't do something like that, then who would? This was exactly the kind of thing he loved doing. But nobody spoke what they thought. Instead, all of them were protesting this injustice against Zhong Yi, feeling deeply indignant about the misunderstanding that other people had of him. Yao Jensai's Weibo. Xiaodong's Weibo. Hua Dongfang's Weibo, uh. When many of those in the entertainment industry saw this, they nearly fainted. That's enough. That's really enough. Can you all not be so funny? In all of China, who does not know what kind of person Zhong Yi is? However, some foreign reporters actually got fooled by the findings of the Chaoyang District Police Station's investigation. Several foreign media outlets started reporting about this news. The English media, all a misunderstanding. The Russian media, the findings of the police investigation show that this is not a criminal case. 
the Portuguese media, let's turn our focus back to the Olympic events. But more of the foreign media did not believe it. Especially the Australian and South Korean media. They reacted to this news in a frenzy. The American media, which naturally sided with their allies, also joined in the commotion and criticized the investigations angrily. A misunderstanding? An accident? Who are you trying to bluff? Only an idiot would believe that. The referees who got beaten up were even angrier as they did not agree with the outcome of the investigation. The Australian media, hand over the assailant. He must be severely punished for his actions. The American media, the American delegation demands an explanation from the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games. The South Korean media, the assault on the South Korean referee cannot just go unpunished. Requesting that the Interpol take over the investigation. When the Chinese netizens saw this, they rolled their eyes. What Interpol? Do you think this is a terrorist attack? The American delegation even wants us to give an explanation? Do you treat yourselves as Interpol? However, there were also some Chinese media outlets that joined in the fray. A small tabloid, the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games should give an explanation to the International Olympic Committee 1. An online media outlet, Zhong Yi has really gone too far. A Chinese expert, fighting violence with violence never works. It only serves to worsen the conflict. A scholar from the education field even resorted to scaremongering. If the case of the injured international referees does not get handled properly, China will suffer a loss of respect in the international arena. The Beijing Olympics will become a laughing stock. A lot of people were supporting Zhong Yi. A lot of people were also scolding him. Each side had their views and reasoning. On the first day of the Olympic Games, all of the domestic and foreign media outlets, along with the people, were in an uproar. All of this was because of Zhong Yi, because of what he had done. It was an unprecedented occurrence. Zhong Yi had successfully stolen the headlines from the Olympics. Chapter 1172, a shocking statement from the organizing committee for the Olympic Games. At night. Public opinion was divided. What kind of experts do they think they are? They're even criticizing teacher Zhong? When the gold medal was taken away from us due to that incorrect call, why didn't any of them step forward? Yeah, all they know is how to talk crap. But Zhong Yi still shouldn't have tripped those referees. Zhong Yi only knows how to bring down our country's image. Get lost. Never mind that the foreigners are criticizing him, even our own countrymen are also scolding him now. A scolding battle began. Countless people were engaged in a fiery war of words. The lights in Zhong Yi's studio were all on as everyone worked overtime to handle the emergency PR. There was someone using the studio's official Weibo account to make clarifications, while others contacted local PR agencies that they were familiar with in an attempt to divert the public's attention. They were hoping that it could limit the amount of negative press brought upon Zhong Yi by this incident. At this moment, Zhong Yi received an important call from the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games. It was also the first time a leader of the organizing committee was contacting Zhong Yi regarding this incident. The person on the other end of the line was the vice president of the organizing committee, Chi Yi Hai. He sounded quite serious over the phone. Chi Yi Hai said, Professor Zhong. Zhong Yi simply replied, President Chi. Chi Yi Hai said, Do you know how big of a mess you've created? I know, Zhong Yi said calmly. Chi Yi Hai sighed and said, the phone lines here at organizing committee are blowing up with complaints as well as inquiries from the foreign media. Even the International Olympic Committee is questioning us. Zhong Yi said, this is down to my personal conduct and has nothing to do with you all. Chi Yi Hai said, how can it not have anything to do with us? Did you really think that you were just an audience member? Did you think that you were just representing yourself? You were invited by us to be the Olympic opening ceremony's main lead and represent China by singing on stage. Every action of yours represents China and the Olympic image. But you were really great, huh? Did you think of the consequences before you did that? Look at the public's opinion right now. The foreign media is scolding you, while the local experts, academics, and commentators have also criticized you. Even if it's not for anything else, shouldn't you at least think about your own reputation? 
attacking referees on the first day of the Olympics? I've really never heard of something like that happening before. Zhong Yi spoke in a casual tone, are you done talking? Chi Yi Hai said, yes, I'm done. Then it's my turn to speak. Zhong Yi's voice turned cold. You've never heard of referees getting attacked before? I've also never heard of such blatant and malicious decisions being made against the Chinese on the first day of the Olympics. Chi Yi Hai was stumped. Zhong Yi said loudly, the gold medal that was supposed to be ours was lost because of a malicious call by the referees, and we weren't even allowed to appeal or change their decision due to the regulations. So you all shouldn't be asking me whether I thought about the consequences. You all should be asking whether those referees thought about it. John Yi's voice alarmed everyone in the studio. Everyone looked over in shock as they listened to John Yi talking to the official from the organizing committee. Chi Yi Hai said, we could have communicated and resolved this matter with the relevant associations. You can't just beat up people and try to be a hero. I'm not trying to be a hero, nor am I a hero, Zhong Yi said in seriousness while holding his cell phone to his ear. Look at the other Olympics and look at the Olympics that we're organizing. I don't know where the problem lies, and I don't know why our countrymen are so disliked by other countries, but how many mistaken calls in the history of the Olympics were resolved? How many cases were given an explanation in the end? Negotiate? Protest? What's the use of that? I can't control the things that happened in the past, but do you think I can just pretend not to see what happened in front of my eyes? I can't do that. Chi Yi Hai said in a low and serious voice, your leg has helped the common folk to vent their anger, but what about you? Look at how many people are criticizing you. Ha Chi Chi looked over. Zhang Zui and the others looked Zhang Yi in the eyes. They heard Zhang Yi bluntly speak, I'm fine with that. I've always believed that the people need an occasional hero and that someone would have to step forward when there's a need. I can be the hero they need when one else is willing to do so. Even if being that hero does not make me look good or causes me to get criticized for a lifetime, I'm fine with that, I'll just accept it. When he heard that, Chi Yi Hai suddenly went quiet. He suddenly realized that he could not retort to that and even felt quite impressed. You'll just accept it. He knew how much that sentence from Zhong Yi meant. Chi Yi Hai realized that they had acted like a clown regarding this matter. Consequences? Effects? Responsibility? Pressure from the public's opinion? They were being too overly cautious and had too many considerations. Faced with Zhong Yi's, I'll just accept it, Chi Yi Hai could not say another a word. After hanging up, Chi Yi Hai suddenly smiled. He wanted to assuage the anger of the people even if it meant that he would be criticized for a lifetime. So this was Zhong Yi? Seeing was truly believing. The next day. The second day of the Olympics. Early in the morning, Zhong Yi was already awake. Or rather, he did not sleep much at all. He went out early to buy breakfast for those who were still working overtime in the office. Come, let's have breakfast. Thank you, Director Zhong. Good morning, Director Zhong. You guys go ahead and eat breakfast. I need to get something done. Everyone had traces of tiredness on their faces. Zhong Yi was touched by the sight but also felt bad. Because of his stubbornness, he had brought trouble to the people around him many times. Sometimes, even though Zhong Yi felt that he had a clear conscience about the things he did, he would feel somewhat apologetic whenever he thought of his friends, relatives, and colleagues around him. The netizens were still arguing online. The foreign media was still denouncing Zhong Yi. Doubting voices were everywhere as all accusations got directed at Zhong Yi. But at this moment, something happened that the local media and people could not have imagined. A sudden announcement shocked the world. The Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games issued a statement, after a study of the regulations, the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games has decided to unilaterally overturn the rule of having no appeal process in the weightlifting event only applicable to the Beijing Olympics. After the Organizing Committee and the relevant international referees associations held an emergency meeting, we have decided the Australian referee, Cooper, will be banned for life while the South Korean referee, Man Jiu, along with four other weightlifting referees will be suspended for two, two, years as punishment. 
accepted the appeal by the Chinese delegation with regards to the men's 62 kg weightlifting event. After thorough communication and discussion, Lee Jiaxi will be awarded the gold medal, with the North Korean athlete's medal changed to silver. The three rulings shocked the entire world. The Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games had made its move. This action stunned countless people. The netizens were all stunned. What? Holy shit. This is too assertive. This is too hecking assertive. Oh my god. Is this, is this true? When have we ever been so assertive? They unilaterally changed the regulations? Li Jiaxi has been awarded the gold medal after the appeal went through. The gold medal has been returned to the rightful champion. Ah. Is that for real? Holy shit. Holy shit. The Beijing Organizing Committee has handled this beautifully. What is happening here? How could our organizing committee have possibly done something like that? Can someone tell me this is really happening? Am I dreaming or what? Damn, I'm crying. Me too, why can't I stop crying? Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games. You are absolutely the best. You are so awesome. Here's a like for you from the people across the country. Well done. I'm so excited that I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John Yi. Thank you, Beijing Organizing Committee. You're all heroes. All of you. The Chinese weightlifting team was dumbfounded. Li Jiaxi was crying tears of joy. He immediately posted on Weibo to thank his motherland. Many of the Chinese athletes liked the post. Many of the coaches applauded and cheered. Many of the citizens were simply in disbelief. At John Yi's studio. Ha Chichi was stunned. This, this. Zhongs were exclaimed, what's going on? John Yi was also stunned at what he was seeing. He did not expect this either. A call came in. It was from Chi Yi Hai. Zhong Yi hurriedly picked it up. Hello, President Chi. Chi Yi Hai said smilingly, have you seen the statement? Yes, holy shit. What are you all trying to do? Zhong Yi asked dumbfoundedly. Chi Yi Hai said, what do you mean by what are we trying to do? You were the one who stirred this up first. After my call to you yesterday, I thought for a very long time. Then, I conveyed everything that you said to me word for word to the higher-ups in a meeting. You saying that, even if you get criticized for a lifetime, you'd just accept it, was enough to leave us unable to criticize you any further. Professor Zhong, we can also do what you were willing to do. Since you weren't afraid of getting criticized, then our organizing committee will not be afraid of getting criticized either. We're the organizing committee for the Beijing Olympics. So how can we allow our athletes to get bullied in an Olympics held in our own backyard, in our own country? You're right. Isn't it just about getting criticized? Isn't it just about being doubted by the world media? We're not afraid of that either. We also accept it. When the people need us, we can be that hero, too. John Yi chuckled. Thank you. Chi Yi Hai shook his head and said, no, we should be the ones thanking you. Anyway, both you and our organizing committee will now have to bear the blame for the rest of our lives. When people speak of the Beijing Olympics in the future, there will definitely be countless foreign media outlets calling this the darkest Olympic Games ever. Beating up referees? Unilaterally changing the regulations? Switching the medal results? I think we will probably be remembered and criticized by a lot of people for the rest of our lives. You better be mentally prepared for it. But John Yi Belly laughed. You all are the ones who should be mentally prepared. I've already been scolded by enough people to last three lifetimes for the things that I did in the past few years, so what am I afraid of? Chi Yi Hai was tickled. That's true. A heavy debt would not burden you any further. Chapter 1173 The Sports World's Friendly Attitude Towards John Yi. The Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games had made an earth shattering move. A public statement issued by them pushed the entire Beijing Olympics into the public's consciousness. Going by the regulations of this world, 
the Olympic organizer had the authority to make certain changes to the rules or meet out punishments as they deemed fit. But no one could have expected that they would really enforce it. Even the Americans in their role as the world police had never changed the rules in any of their Olympic events like this. Moreover, this change was even made to the advantage of China itself. This was what made it even more shocking for everyone. Zhang Yuanqi gave a like. Yao Jintai gave a like. Zhang Xia gave a like too. There were only cheers throughout the country. Everyone was overjoyed with this decision. This should have been how it was. Yeah, it should have been this way at the beginning. Well changed and well punished. Ha ha ha, banned for life? Well done. Let's see who still dares to deliberately target us during our Olympics. This is such an important statement. I never expected that our country would do such a shocking thing. Even now, I can't believe this is happening. It happened. It really happened. Cheering? Jumping in joy? Just these words alone were unable to describe the current feelings of the Chinese people. After suppressing their pent-up anger for a day, they could finally vent it all. They were all flowing with happiness from head to toe. When they were faced with such incorrect calls and deliberate malicious decisions in the past, there was nothing they could do about it. Other than protesting, it was still only protesting. Then what? After that, everything would remain the same. The protests did not change anything. But this time, they were the organizers of the Olympics in Beijing. As the saying goes, every dog has its day. The wheel of fortune keeps on turning. Now that it was China's turn to hold the Olympics, the B. Aging Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games used a world-shocking public statement to inform everyone, this is our take on things. They could feel a sense of pride. But at the same time, the foreign media started criticizing the actions. The English media, what? What is happening? The American media, the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games has made a shocking and unacceptable decision. The South Korean media, strongly protesting the organizers for siding with their own people. The Japanese media, unbelievable. This is the darkest moment in the history of the Olympics. The Australian media, banned for life. Changing the medal results. People across the world also reacted fiercely. Especially those in Australia, South Korea, and several other countries. The Australians. Shit cunts. The Chinese are too despicable. How can they handle things this way? Where's the sportsmanship? Where's the Olympic spirit? Unilaterally changing the regulations, an action like this is just too despicable. The South Koreans. They skipped over the referees and changed the gold medal winner? How could they suspend our weightlifting referee? I'm so mad about this. The Chinese decision has made us furious. It's a conspiracy. The Canadians. They're abusing their authority to benefit themselves. This decision has an even more negative impact than the referees getting beaten up. What are the Olympics organizers doing? I strongly object to this. This decision is a joke. The foreign media and citizens were scolding as well. There was no longer much attention given to the referees being injured in the Olympic venue. The focus of the public's opinion had turned to the statement issued by the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games. Everyone was now discussing and questioning the action it took. Many of the foreign Olympic delegations and athletes were having none of it as they protested to the International Olympic Committee. The athletes from the Australian delegation were the fiercest in leading the protest and even threatened to collectively withdraw from the Games. Perhaps due to pressure or some other motives, the International Olympic Committee also came forward to declare, regarding the organizers' unilateral decision, we hereby express our puzzledness and condemnation of their actions. When many of the country's delegations had this statement from the International Olympic Committee to back them up, their criticism became even louder. However, the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games ignored them and did not withdraw their statement. They even held the makeup medal ceremony for the men's 62 kg weightlifting event the next day before the Olympic events began. In the presence of the media reporters from every country, the Chinese athlete, Li Jiaxi, was awarded the gold medal. Faced with all kinds of pressure from the public's opinion, 
the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games still went about doing things their way. The officials from the organizing committee also clearly indicated to the media present that their decision would remain unchanged. Their decision was set in stone. Everyone was left helpless by the Beijing Organizing Committee's forceful stance. As they were not the organizers, it did not matter how much they protested or cursed. The final decision on this issue was still up to the organizer at the end. The Olympics would still continue. The competition would still go on. And the Australian delegation was definitely not going to back out from the Games either. That afternoon, Zhong Yi was humming the song Beijing Welcomes You as he walked into the Olympic venue. He was here to return the work pass that he was given previously and to settle the issue of the accident involving the referees. The events held in the morning had already ended while the events scheduled for the afternoon had not begun yet. Some of the foreign athletes were warming up and practicing. When they saw Zhong Yi, many of them could recognize him. Look. It's him. God damn it. I really want to teach him a lesson. A large, muscular Australian swimmer angrily at Zhong Yi. He looked like he wanted to charge at him but was stopped by his teammates. A group of foreign referees were also glowering at Zhong Yi. It looked like they were trying to put on a show of force against Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi ignored them as he slowly walked over. The Australian and South Korean swim referees continued to stare at him. Zhong Yi glanced at them and was kind of irritated by their stares. When he walked past them, he suddenly stopped in his tracks and stretched out his leg. The foreign referees were given a huge scare as they jumped away in fright as though they had gotten their tails stepped on. Everyone saw the video yesterday and had a deep impression of Zhong Yi's leg of God. When they saw him stretching out his leg again, they were just like birds getting startled by the mere twang of a bow one. One of the Australian swim referees even tripped over his own feet and fell to the floor. What are you doing? The referees all looked infuriated. However, Zhong Yi lowered his head and knelt down to adjust his shoelaces before getting up to walk away. Tying his shoelaces? The foreign referees nearly vomited blood. They knew that he did this on purpose and were furious. At the same time, they felt a little embarrassed. He was only tying his shoelaces and did not do anything to them, but they were so scared they nearly shat their pants, with one person even falling to the ground. Heck! This person was too wicked. Many athletes and referees looked at Zhong Yi and gnashed their teeth in hatred. How could Lillian, the most beautiful woman in Britain, have performed on the same stage with such a hooligan? Not far away off in front of him, many Chinese athletes and coaches came face to face with him. When they saw Zhong Yi, they were a little stunned. Zhong Yi noticed them as well. Some of them were from the swim team? Some of them were from the diving team? Zhong Yi did not say anything and just walked over. He had been locked in a fierce struggle with the sports world during the scolding battle back then. As so many of the athletes and coaches were scolded by him at that time, the relationship between the two sides has always been poor. When Zhong Yi was appointed to perform in the Olympics opening ceremony, many of those from the sports world had protested against it. That was why Zhong Yi did not plan on greeting them. He just pretended not see them as he walked past. But even though he ignored them, they said something. A female swimmer smiled as she waved to him. Professor Zhong. Zhong Yi was stunned and instinctively replied, Hey. Beside her, a diving coach warmly nodded his head at him. Good afternoon, teacher Zhong. Ah, good afternoon, Zhong Yi said dumbfounded. Where are you heading? The police asked me to come and settle yesterday's matter. Will you be all right? Ha ha, I'll be fine. Along the way, as long as a Chinese athlete or coach encountered Zhong Yi, they would greet and acknowledge him. There were even some very enthusiastic athletes who came over to make small talk with him. Zhong Yi was really unprepared for this. It seemed like the domestic sports world had suddenly changed their attitude towards him overnight. Chapter 1174, Zhong Yi's Olympic Commentary on the fourth day of the Olympics. After three days of scolding by all the different parties, the issue began to subside. John Yi, who was sleeping in late, finally woke up at 11 a.m. After he got up, he went straight out to the living room and saw his parents watching the Olympics on TV. 
Dad, Mom, how many do we have? We just got another one today. And in total? Six gold medals. That's not much, is it? Yeah, the performance this year is just average. We threw away our chances in several of the events. Hi. Do you want to eat something? No, I'm going back to the studio to have a look. Oh yes, the swimming finals will be happening in a few days. Get us a few extra tickets. Ah, uh, I'll try. Noon. At John Yi studio, everyone was busy working. When John Yi arrived, Zhang Zui, smiling, came to him with several documents for him and discussed the work that had been done over the past few days. Director Zhang, the issue of you tripping the referees has more or less been resolved. The police pretty much leaned toward our side and have already settled it for us. The suspended referees have also returned home and did not make any comments regarding the incident. We were lucky the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games issued that statement this time. That diverted away all of the heat on you and subsequently lightened the impact of the incident. Zhang Yi browsed through the documents. Good. Zhongs were pointed at it and said, this is your popularity score curve over the past few days. Your domestic popularity score has increased by quite a bit again. Although you're still in first place on the A-list rankings, your popularity score has been rising very quickly. This chart over here shows your Asian celebrity ranking, where you've also experienced an increase in your score. We've analyzed the main reason for this to be because of a large number of people around Asia who got to know about you through that incident. Regarding your international ranking, as they only publish data for celebrities who are at least an international C-lister, we can't find out more. But according to our analysis, it is definitely trending up as well. If your popularity in the country and Asia constantly keeps rising, there's no reason why there wouldn't be any changes in the international rankings. But for now, there's no indication of that. In summary, the situation for you now is pretty good overall. Not only did you not get burnt this time, you even increased your visibility on the international scene. I guess we can still consider that a blessing. The only issue is your reputation. I don't think we can really turn that around in the short term. Johnny laughed and said, All right, I got it. Little Wang also came over. Director Zhong, these are invitations to collaborate on projects that we've received in the past few days. Okay, let me have a look at them. Zhong Yi went through them. Having a team was really very efficient. There was always going to be someone around to help him deal with things like popularity analysis and project negotiations. This saved Zhong Yi a lot of worry and greatly improved his work productivity. Ha Chichi came down from upstairs. What project would you like to take on next? I haven't thought of it yet. Zhong Yi smiled and said, What do you guys suggest? Ha Chichi and Zhongs were gave each other a look. Ha Chichi said, We had a discussion about this, actually. During these two weeks the Olympics are held, anything we try to do will probably end up being insignificant. Nothing can take attention away from the Olympics, after all. Zhongs were said, why don't we accept some advertisement campaigns related to the Olympics then? We can earn some money from that and also rub off a little on the Olympics hype. Zhong Yi threw his hands up and said, have you guys been watching any TV lately? The ad campaigns have all gone to the athletes. Their contracts were probably negotiated several months in advance, so do you think that there will be anything left for me? After all, I'm not an athlete, so I'm not really going to have a chance. We should think of something else. Wu Yi said, how about producing a new show? That's our rice bowl, after all. Zhong Yi asked, what offers do we have? Wu Yi said, only a few not so popular satellite channels approached us. But after we took a look at their proposals, we didn't find them to be too ideal. Little Wang giggled and said, Director Zhong, how about releasing a new song? We can shoot a music video to try for the charts and help increase your popularity. I really like your songs. They're all so good. Produce a show? Shoot a music video? Hold a concert? Take on an acting project? Do an advertisement campaign? Everyone was throwing out all kinds of ideas onto the table. But Zhong Yi still did not make a decision. 
he always had very high standards for the kind of work he would take, so there were more considerations he had to think about. An athlete had a limited sporting lifespan, and their peak when they were in their best physical and competitive state would only last a few years. This was the same for a celebrity too. He always believed that there was a time for everything. If he waited until he was older and missed the opportunity, he wouldn't be able to do those things again even if he wanted to. For example, when he did Ghost Blows Out the Light on radio in the past, the audience were all very receptive to it and all of them only had praise for the program. But if Zhong Yi spent another one or two months doing nothing but telling supernatural ghost stories on radio nowadays, that would obviously not work out and the audience would probably not look forward to it either, this was what it meant by, a time and place for everything. So he always considered every job offer that he received very carefully as he wanted to ensure that he would be able to provide as much variety to the audience as he could give. So what could he do during this Olympic period? Or should he wait until the Olympic Games were over to decide? While he was thinking about it, the doorbell suddenly rang. Little Wang went to answer the door. A, hey, teacher you? The visitor was Zhong Yi's old classmate, and a current host at Central TV Sports Channel, Yuing Yi. Hi. Yuing Yi waved and smiled. The studio staff were also very friendly toward her. All of them knew that she was director Zhong's good friend and classmate from his university days, so they wouldn't treat her like they would treat a client. Little Wang went to pour some tea for her. Zhong Yi beckoned for her to take a seat. What brings you here today? Yuini smiled and said, I just came to visit my old classmate. Am I not welcome? How could that be? Since I have nothing much to do anyway, why don't we chat over a drink? Beer or Chardonnay? Merlot or whiskey? I have everything here, John Yi said joyfully. Yuini rolled her eyes. Who wants today drink with you? I'm here for business. I still have commentary to do when I get back in the afternoon. It's the Olympics period. Do you really think that I'm that free? Zhong Yi knew that she'd come with an agenda. Tell me about it then, I'm listening. Little Wang brought the tea over. Yuini was not bothered that the tea was still hot. She brought the teacup up to her mouth and blew at it before drinking. After she put the teacup down, she looked at Zhong Yi. Didn't you say you have nothing much to do these days? Zhong Yi blinked. Yeah, why? Yuini smiled. I have an offer, do you want to accept it? John Yi chuckled. Tell me about it first and I'll consider it. Look at how careful you're being. Yuini giggled. Would I try to harm you? It's definitely something good. Why don't you promise me first and I'll tell you more about it? John Yi curled his lips. I can't do that. Yuini grumbled, if you don't promise me first, I won't tell you about it. Zhong Yi gestured to the outside of the reception room. Little Wang, please see our guest out. Yuini got anxious. He, are you really going to chase me out like this? All right, all right, I'll tell you. Zhong Yi smiled but did not say anything. Yuini's next words stunned him. Yuini looked at him, do you want to become an Olympic commentator? Don't joke. Zhong Yi waved her off. What do you mean by joking? Yuini said, it's true. Central TV Sports Channel has suddenly decided to recruit an outside host and commentator. Do you want to take the role? Zhong Yi was startled. Are you serious? Why would I lie to you? Yuini gave him a look. Zhong Yi was quite happy. This sounds like an interesting job, but why did you guys decide to approach me? Yuin Yi said, because you're really popular at the moment. Zhong Yi said, but my relationship with Central TV is not good. I don't care about that. This time, it's Central TV Sports Channel that's inviting you to join us. Whatever fight and disagreements you have with Central TV Department 1 and the station heads have nothing to do with us, right? When you were battling against Peter Go. Our department was giving you the most positive of coverage and promoting you throughout the entire event. We don't have any enmity with you and also did not take part in the scolding battle against you with Department 1, right? Yuin Yi said. Zhong Yi shrugged. I don't remember that. Yuin Yi didn't know how to respond. Zhong Yi looked at her. 
Are your guys' viewership ratings doing badly? Yuingi became very embarrassed. How did you know? If the viewership rating goals had been met, how could the sports channel possibly risk inviting me to join as a host? You have to know, my reputation has never been good before, and it's even worse at Central TV. Zhong Yi understood the situation very clearly. Was it due to the gold medal tally being too low in recent days that led to the viewership ratings dropping? Yuingi gave a bitter laugh. Dropping? The viewership rating for our live coverage on the first day was over 40% and even reached a high of 50%. Later on, after the fuss that you kicked up, and with the statement issued by the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games, a lot of the subsidiary news had stolen away the attention from our coverage. Coupled with the decreased amount of gold medals and Team China performing below average, the viewership ratings plummeted. Do you know what the internal estimates for today's ratings are? The off-peak viewership rating went as low as 25%. And the peak estimate was only 37%. Zhong Yi said, that's not too bad then. A bite of China and the voice only managed how much in the nationwide viewership ratings. It's at most 10% of what you guys are getting. But this is the Olympics. Yuing Yi said angrily, it's even the Beijing Olympics, so how can you compare it with those reality shows? It would definitely be much higher rated than your shows. She then took out a contract. Yuing Yi pushed it to him. Have a look at the contract that we prepared for you. Zhong Yi said with a laugh, I'm too lazy to flip through all that. Just tell me, what do you guys expect from me? Yuing Yi said, nothing much. As long as you're willing to join us, everything can be discussed. What the station wants now is for our channel to increase the ratings. During the commentary, you can freely express yourself as you like as long as it's within certain limits, just don't go beyond the boundaries. We're just about 10 days away from the closing ceremony. You'll be paired as my partner, and there might also be retired athletes or coaches joining us for the commentary segments. We'll be in charge of the show every day from 1 to 4 p.m. All the other time slots will be handled by the other commentary teams. We won't have to worry about those, so the actual working time isn't really that much on average. Zhong Yi asked, where will we be working from? Yu Yi said, at the live coverage studio in the Olympic grounds. Zhong Yi asked, when do I start? Yu Yi said, tomorrow. Zhong Yi nodded. Then he looked through the glass partition and clapped his hands. Little Wang came into the room and said, Director Zhong. Get me a pen, Zhong Yi said. Okay. Little Wang brought one over very quickly. Zhong Yi lowered his head and signed the contract. Then he pushed it back to Yu Yi with a smile. Is that all? Yu Yi took the contract. Aren't you at least going to read it? Zhong Yi said, I trust you well enough, don't I? All right, I get it. I better hurry back and let them know about this. Yu Yi smiled happily and said, Come over early tomorrow. I'll familiarize you. Zhong Yi said feeling amused, do I really need to be? When I started doing live broadcasts, you hadn't even joined Central TV. Whoa. Yu Yi quipped, this young man talks really big. Let's see what you're capable of tomorrow then. After she left, Zhong Yi also came out of the reception room. Little Wang had obviously let everyone else know about the contract. Ha Chichi quickly asked, Director Zhong, what's going on? What is that contract about? Zhongs were asked in a startled manner. Everyone crowded around him. Zhong Yi calmly explained, Oh, Central TV Sports Channel has invited me to take part in their live coverage for the Olympics as a host and commentator. I'll be starting work tomorrow. Everyone screamed excitedly. Ha Chichi said in surprise, What? Zhongs were said, Such a good deal exists. This is great, this is great. Little Wang said joyfully. Zhong Yi also laughed. Yeah, so how can I not take this job, right? Earlier, he was thinking about what he wanted to do next. But there was no need to think anymore. During the Olympics, nothing would garner more attention than the Olympics itself. The live coverage of the Olympics on Central TV Sports Channel was a show that had the craziest viewership ratings compared to any other show. He had put in so much work for The Voice, and what was its nationwide viewership ratings? 
At most 2% or so. At most 2% or so. He had given so much effort for a bite of China, and what was its nationwide viewership ratings? At most 3% or so. But for the live coverage of the Olympics. The nationwide viewership ratings would easily start off with at least 30% as the base ratings and it could get even higher than that. This was not even comparable to what he had achieved so far, so he definitely had to take this job. Furthermore, he would treat it very seriously and put in the effort to make sure it worked. If he could do well here, it would probably help boost his domestic popularity rankings by a very great deal. Besides, as Zhong Yi had never done any sports commentary before, he really liked the idea of having a fresh challenge. Regarding this point, the citizens were also very receptive to it. It was as though everyone really enjoyed watching Zhong Yi cross over into all the various types of professions. Chapter 1175, Zhong Yi commentates the Olympics, part 1 of 5, the next day. It was the fifth day of the Olympics. Zhong Yi practically pulled an all-nighter by himself in the studio to research his new role for today. He had listened to commentary for an event from the last Olympics while his desk was littered with all kinds of information, such as the detailed schedules and rules of each event, the referees' judging criteria, the world records for the events, the athletes' best results, the likelihood of someone winning a medal, etc. Zhong Yi had spent the entire night going through the thick stack of information prepared for him by his staff. If one wanted to go on a live broadcast to commentate the Olympics, it wouldn't be possible without a foundation. Zhong Yi knew that he had to at least do some basic research to be ready for it. Since he accepted the job, he wouldn't go into it without making preparations. The phone rang. It was his mother. You didn't come home yesterday night? Zhong Yi said, ah, I was kept busy at the office. His mother asked, why didn't you call then? Are you coming back later? Probably at night. I have some work to handle during the day. Zhong Yi said with a laugh, Oh, mom, remember to watch the Olympics live coverage this afternoon at 1. Let dad know too. His mother wondered, what for? Zhong Yi said, ha ha, you'll know after watching. In the morning, the official Weibo of Zhong Yi studio also posted an announcement. At Zhong Yi Studio, everyone, please remember to catch the live coverage of the Olympics this afternoon at 1 p.m. There will be a surprise in store. The netizens were also unsure of what this meant. The Olympics live coverage? What surprise? I don't understand. What do they mean? Are they doing a promotion for the Olympics? I heard that Central TV Sports Channel's viewership ratings these days have dropped a lot. Several key people at Central TV are panicking, and the hosts are also reminding everyone to pay more attention to the developments of the Olympic Games. After all, this is the first time our country is hosting it. It wouldn't look nice if the ratings are too low. Ari, that's because our performance this year isn't that good. Yeah, I didn't really pay much attention to it. I'm still watching. No matter how badly they're performing, I'll support our athletes. I wonder what Zhong Yi Studio is hinting with that announcement. Everyone felt rather confused. Just before noon. In the Olympic grounds. Zhong Yi arrived at Central TV's live coverage studio. The morning's events had ended and there was a short break at noon. The staff were all eating box lunches, with some of them eating and reading their transcripts simultaneously as they prepared for the afternoon's events. Amy, Zhong Yi greeted. Yuini lightly pushed aside her box lunch and looked up. You're here? Have you eaten? Zhong Yi smiled and said, not yet. Yuini immediately called out, get teacher Zhong some food too. A staff member quickly brought over a box lunch for him. Thanks. Zhong Yi didn't say anything else and immediately pulled over a chair to sit down. Then he began eating with relish. When a lot of the people in the studio saw Zhong Yi, they gave him several more looks as it was their first time meeting a legendary figure like him. Yuini also gave him a look. You're such a big shot. Why are you still eating box lunches like the rest of us? Zhong Yi was amused and waved around the box in his hands. Why can't I eat this? The food provided here is already quite good. Back when I was filming on location for a bite of China, we didn't even get something like this. We were always freeloading off of the locals, 
and those millet pancakes were so hard to chew that we couldn't even get them down our throats with water, ha ha. If you think that this box lunch is bad, you guys would probably have starved to death if you went along with us for those shoots. Yuingi laughed. I always thought that you led a pampered life. Oh, come on. Zhong Yi said with a laugh, I've only been going through hardship all these years. At this time, the executives of the Central TV Sports Channel arrived. One of the executives said pleasantly and cheerfully, Teacher Zhong, we're depending on you this time. Zhong Yi held the box lunch in his left hand and extended his right to shake hands with the executive. Then they had a simple exchange regarding the later work matters. The executive asked, has little you briefed you yet? Are you familiar with the requirements of your role? Zhong Yi replied, more or less. Another executive said nervously, don't take it so lightly, teacher Zhong. We're depending on you to help increase the viewership ratings. You've never done any sports hosting before, so you'll be lacking much of the foundation. He quickly took out a large stack of documents. This is an overview of the events taking place this afternoon and the related information. There's a list of who the previous gold medalists were and what the best records for each event are. It's all written in here. Please take a look so that you won't get it wrong later. Zhong Yi took the documents from him and flipped through them. Then he returned them to him and said, there's no need for these. I've already memorized all of the information and statistics related to the Olympics. Yuini was taken aback. How did you memorize it? I just did. Zhong Yi said, in all the time that I've done hosting, I've never needed a script. The people around also looked at Zhong Yi in disbelief. Everyone in Central TV knew that Zhong Yi had never depended on using scripts before, but this was not exactly like the shows he'd done in the past. This was live coverage for the Olympics, and it involved a great amount of statistics that were just too detailed to be memorized. And then, there were a whole lot of foreign names involved, so who could possibly remember all of that information? Not even a professional sports commentator like Yu Yi could do it. Yu Yi asked in distrust, who is the world record holder for the women's hammer throw? Irina. And the distance? 81.05 meters. Who had the best result in the men's pole vault this year? Robert, with a height of 6. 1 meters. In the women's balance beam, who is ranked 11th in the world? Japanese athlete Toyama Yoko. Someone quickly went to check in disbelief. 11th? Who is it? Holy shit. It's really Toyoma Yoko. Only silence could be heard. Then, Yuingi cried out, you've really memorized everything? Everyone looked at Zhongyi like they had seen a ghost. Him memorizing the world record holders or the best results of the year was acceptable. That was because those disciplines were some of the most popular and anticipated events. But how the heck did he remember so clearly who the world number 11 was in the balance beam? How could this memory of yours be so good? Zhong Yi simply shrugged and finished up the last bit of his lunch. What did you think I was doing spending the entire night awake? I am a professional host, so don't doubt the foundations of my professionalism. Yu Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. But aren't you being way too professional like this? Does that mean that I'm just an amateur? Everyone here was utterly convinced. The executive gave him a thumbs up. Professor Zhong is indeed worthy of his reputation. He is indeed the smartest person to come along in a century. I've truly broadened my horizons today. We were still worried that you would be unfamiliar with doing live coverage for sports, but it seems like we were worried for nothing. You're truly such a great professional. Amazing. Zhong Yi smiled and said, don't say that. I'm just performing my duty so that I can get paid. Since I've already accepted the role, I'll definitely want to do it well. Don't worry about it. If you guys have any suggestions, you can mention them to me as well. The executive nodded and said, we might have been covering the Olympics too traditionally, too old-fashioned, too outdated. The expectations of the audience these days are getting higher and higher, so the things they like are different from the past. We've analyzed that other than our country's delegation not performing to their potential, those factors are also part of the reason why the viewership ratings kept dropping. We've invited you this time as we also wish to make some changes and implement some new ideas to the commentary. Zhong Yi nodded in acknowledgement. 
I understand. By appointing Zhong Yi as an Olympic commentator, the Central TV Sports Channel was taking an enormous risk. They had discussed it for an entire day during their meeting before finally making this decision. This was a very bold attempt, but what would it lead to? Nobody knew. Chapter 1176, Zhong Yi Commentates the Olympics, Part 2 of 5, at noon. Everything was set up and ready in the live coverage studio. The professional athlete invited by the Central TV Sports Channel had arrived. It was the former table tennis Grand Slam winner one, Bao Han. She had been retired for many years. Sister Bao. Yuini nodded at her. Bao Han smiled and said, Teacher Yu. The two of them had commentated together many times and were very familiar with each other. But when Bao Han saw that there was another person sitting in the live coverage studio, she was taken aback for a moment. She clearly knew who he was because it was just impossible not to know him. In all of China, who did not know the famous Zhong Yi? But it was obvious that Bao Han had not expected Zhong Yi to be here today. The retired athletes who appeared on the show to provide commentary were usually only participating as guests. Sometimes, it would be her, sometimes it would be other people, and there was also a chance that they would make a last-minute switch. This lineup was often not fixed, so she didn't know about the changes to the internal arrangements of Central TV Sports Channel's commentators and other affairs. It was also likely that Central TV Sports Channel had not informed her beforehand due to the awkwardness surrounding the situation. After all, the table tennis team was the cause of the battle between Zhong Yi and the sports world that had shocked the nation. Zhong Yi nodded at her. Yu Yi quickly said, the three of us will be teaming up for today's show. Bao Han acknowledged her and looked at Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi looked back at her. Bao Han smiled and went forward with hand reached out. Hello, Professor Zhong. Hello. Zhong Yi stood up to shake her hand. There's still about half an hour before we go live. Shall we get to know each other a little first? That will help us work better later. Bao Han said, I already know you pretty well. Zhong Yi was surprised. Oh, are you? Yes, we have argued on Weibo before, Bao Han said with a smile. Zhong Yi said, Ah? Did we? Yu Yi was taking a sip of water and nearly choked. Cough, cough. Bao Han said helplessly, yes, we did. When you declared war on the sports world during the new year, a few hundred of us responded and scolded you back. But as it was, none of us could outscold you at all. That's why I said it's not our first time interacting. You don't even know how aggravated we were over that matter at the time. But we shouldn't bring that up again and just let bygones be bygones. Just for that leg of God that you've played on the first day of the Olympics, we'll write off all the unpleasantness from before. That trip of the referee was such a release. You've scolded us once, but also taken the blame for us once, so that makes us even. Only now that she realized they were in the studio, so she asked, Ah, the cameras are not recording this, are they? The camera operator laughed and said, No. Bao Han wasn't good looking, but her temperament was rather interesting. Yuingi was really afraid that the two would come to blows, but it looked like she had been worried for nothing. Then shall we go through the script together? Okay. The two women exchanged whispers with each other. Zhong Yi did not take part in the exchange since he did not have any lines. It was almost time. Zhong Yi's mother turned on the television. It's starting. His father said, what did our son mean by that? Who knows? He only said to watch the Olympic live coverage in the afternoon, that's all, his mother said. His father nodded. Then let's just watch it. At old Yao's house. Yao M I shouted, it's starting, it's starting. Yao Jinsai asked, what's on in the afternoon? Ping pong. It's the women's quarterfinals match, Yao M I said. Old Yao's wife said, oh, that's not interesting. It's a guaranteed win. But we still have to watch it. Yao Mi said, that's the result everyone is expecting as well. But if no one watches it, then how bad would the viewership ratings for the Beijing Olympics be? Yao Jinsai said in amusement, all right, let's watch. Zhong Yi's first uncle's house. The fall semester hadn't started yet, so the three sisters had gathered here. Wow, it's starting. 
Time to watch the Olympics. It's the table tennis event today. Meanwhile, a lot of others had also turned on their televisions. Some people were watching the live coverage on their cell phones in the subway. Some people had secretly launched their web browsers to watch the Olympics at work. But of course, there were also many others who did not really pay attention to today's events. They did not think there would be any surprises, and since it wasn't the finals yet, there was less attention given to it. The live coverage began. After the introductory music played, the cameras cut to the live coverage studio. Yuini appeared on screen. Welcome, everyone, to the Olympics live coverage studio. I am Yuini, and the women's table tennis quarterfinals match will be starting in five minutes. The match will be between the current world number two, China's Sun Lin Lin, and the current world number 13, Japan's Kaki Aoi. The opening commentary did not seem any different than before. But with the following introduction, all of the viewers watching TV burst into an uproar. Yuini smiled and said, First, let us introduce today's guest that everyone should know, Bao Han. The camera cut to her. Bao Han waved. Hello, everyone. Then Yuini said, Next up, we have a new guest commentator who will be joining me to cover the Olympics live from today onwards, the famous host, John Yi. The camera cut to him. John Yi's smiling face appeared. Hello to our viewers and friends. His mother pointed at the television dumbfounded. Little Yi. His father was stunned. It's Little Yi. His eldest younger sister exclaimed, Ah. His third sister shouted, It's brother. Brothers on TV. Yao Jiansai said, What? Yao Mi got extremely excited. Teacher Zhong has become an Olympic commentator? Old Yao's wife sat down. This will be interesting. I'll watch as well. Everyone on the internet went crazy as well. How could this be? Damn, did I see that wrong? How did Zhong Yi go and become a commentator? Well, he's already a host to begin with. But this is sports commentary we're talking about. He has no experience in this. Isn't he on very bad terms with the sports world? Why did they invite him onto the show? And he's even going to commentate on table tennis? This looks like it's going to be really interesting. Everyone, quickly come and watch. Zhong Yi is going to commentate for the Olympics, my god. Are you serious? Yeah. It's true. The live coverage is happening right now. No wonder Zhong Yi Studio sent out a Weibo post like that. Teacher Zhong has a new job. This is a huge job. How surprising. Damn, quickly go and watch. It's starting, it's starting. We must watch it just because Zhong Yi's on it. The news spread from there like wildfire. The media was surprised. The netizens were surprised. Everyone was astonished, bewildered, confounded by Zhong Yi's appearance. A lot of people who weren't intending to watch the afternoon match were now turning on their televisions at the same time. This was the appeal that an A-list celebrity had. Without needing to say anything, just by showing themselves or having their names mentioned, it would be able to attract countless sets of eyeballs. This was one of the reasons why Central TV Sports Channel had taken the risk to invite Zhong Yi to commentate for them. An A-list celebrity like this always meant a high viewership rating. But of course, whether they could hold the viewers' interest and retain them by keeping them watching would have to depend on the ability of the commentator. The attention that the live coverage was getting soared. Everyone wanted to see how Zhong Yi's commentary would be different from others. In fact, even the staff of the Central TV Sports Channel wanted to know. The few executives and most of the staff along with the camera operators were all eagerly paying attention to the live coverage studio. The cameras cut to the competition venue. Yuing Yi said, all right, the match has started. Bao Han said, seems like Sun Lin Lin's form today will be pretty good. Is that so? Zhong Yi asked. Bao Han said, yes, she looks very excited for today's game, and her body is quite relaxed as well. Zhong Yi said, then let's wait and see. 1 to 0, 5 to 0. 7 to 1, 11 to 2. Sun Lin Lin used just 4 minutes to take the first game. It was too fast. It was too easy. Yuing Yi said, 
great showing. Bauhan smiled and said, Sun Lin Lin's form is in great shape. Zhong Yi said helplessly, this is my first time commentating and I was prepared to do this for at least an hour. But why does it look like the match will be decided in 20 minutes? Yui Ni smiled. There are practically no opponents who are a match for the Chinese table tennis team nowadays. But Zhong Yi said, they definitely still have opponents. A. Eh? Yui Ni was startled. There are still opponents. Japan? South Korea? Baohan also gave Zhong Yi a look as she wondered what he was going to say. Zhong Yi looked at them curiously and said, isn't it quite obvious? The Chinese table tennis team only has one opponent, the ITTF2. From the minimum height of the ball toss, to the red and black sides of a racket, then changing the size of the ball, and the change from the 21-point to 11-point scoring system, all of those were introduced to make it more difficult for the Chinese team to win. But it doesn't seem like any of those changes were effective. I wonder what the ITTF will try to pull off next. Bao Han laughed. Pfft. Yuini was tickled pink as well. The home viewers. Ha ha ha. The only opponent they have is the ITTF. I'm cramping up from laughing. As a comedian, this guy is too professional. The second game began. Yuini said, Sun Lin Lin will be serving. It's no good, she faltered. Baohan said, the quality of this service was not good. Kaki Aoe scored a point with the return serve. However, Zhong Yi loudly applauded. Beautiful. Baohan was floored. Ah. Yuini Yi asked in surprise, teacher Zhong, whose side are you on? Zhong Yi said, of course I'm with Team China. Then why are you applauding and calling it beautiful when the other team scored a point? Yuini said in a speechless manner. Zhong Yi's reply left everyone speechless. It's exactly because of that that I'm hoping for our Chinese team to drop a few more points. That would give the other country's athletes the illusion that they have a chance of winning against us. Otherwise, if we keep playing like this, I'll be afraid that table tennis might get removed from future Olympics. The camera operator cramped up in laughter. Baohan laughed out loud on camera. The viewers were also roaring with laughter. Ha ha ha. I've got to give it to this fella. What a joker. Is it all right to commentate this way? Before long, the match was brought to an end. Sun Lin Lin was victorious and raised her racket in celebration. Baohan said, Lin Lin looks very happy with her performance. Zhong Yi added, yes, but she's actually not feeling happy about it. She's just acting like she is. Otherwise, that would make her opponent look really bad. Sun Lin Lin is an excellent athlete and knows how to be considerate to her opponent. I guess that's what you'd call Olympic spirit and good sportsmanship. Today, everyone should know of this athlete named Sun Lin Lin. This act of celebration with her racket in the air is really too touching. Bao Han. Yu Ying Yi. She was truly happy about her performance, all right? When did she ever mean it the way you described? Touching? Your sister. Chapter 1177, Zhong Yi commentates the Olympics, part 3 of 5, later that afternoon. In the table tennis stadium. Sun Lin Lin was wiping off her sweat when her teammates and coaches surrounded her. A teammate said, good showing. Sun Lin Lin said confidently, I just played like I normally would. The women's team head coach laughed and said, Lin Lin, you're going viral. Sun Lin Lin said in a stunned manner, huh? How can that be? You're really going viral. Her teammates also laughed loudly. Ha! Huh? But it's just the quarterfinals, not the finals. Sun Lin Lin was very confused. What did they mean by she was going viral? I've won the championship many times, but I've never gone viral all those times. Table tennis had always been a strong event for China, so winning first place was always expected. The people were so used to it that they didn't really care anymore. Check it out online. Go and watch the replay of your match. In the player's lounge, Sun Lin Lin nearly fainted after watching her own match on her teammate's cell phone. Her teammate said in amusement, how was it? The viewers were totally tickled by it. 
Sun Lin Lin said with a wry smile, who could have expected that Zhong Yi would go to the live coverage studio and poke fun at me. Her teammate burst into laughter. Zhong Yi's commentary was so cool. He stung the ITTF with his sarcastic remarks and praised us so much. About that playing it up skit he performed, I've decided that I'll forgive him. She snatched her cell phone from Sun Lin Lin. Ha ha, I'm going to watch this again. It's so funny. Several matches featuring the Chinese team's players ended. Although China did not really do well at the World Team Table Tennis Championships, especially the men's team, their dominance in the men's and women's singles was still quite obvious. They hardly needed any effort to win a match. In the live coverage studio. Yuing Yi smiled and said, well, we've come to the end of our commentary for today. Bao Han said, here's to next time, viewers and friends. John Yi said calmly, goodbye. After they were done, other events scheduled for later would be handled by the other commentators. When the cameras stopped rolling, Yuing Yi splayed her upper body out on the table, laughing with her head buried in her hands. When Bao Han saw her laughing, she couldn't hold it in either and started laughing loudly as well. Professor Zhong, your commentary was too far from routine. You made both me and teacher you laugh on the broadcast. Yuini raised her head. I did not laugh during the broadcast, all right? I held it in until the end before laughing. Ayo, I really have to take my hat off to you. I've never heard anyone commentate a sports event like that. At this moment, several of the central TV sports channel's executives came over. Professor Zhong. Hey, Chief Wang. Well done. So I may continue speaking like this in the future? Yes, just do it this way. Although there were some parts that might be a little controversial, the audience responded very well to it. Is that so? Yes, you'll know when you check online. They had been in the studio all this while and did not even go to the bathroom, so of course they wouldn't have checked out the online reviews. It wasn't even a matter of the audience responding well anymore. Other than a minority of the people calling it controversial, the entire country was praising it to the heavens. The netizens were all liking it. That was so fun to watch. The match was whatever, but the commentary was wonderful. Ha ha ha, I kept laughing as I watched. John Yi is hilarious. I've never heard anyone commentate like that. Yeah, it really caught my attention. It was clearly going to be a predictable and boring match, but the coverage made it otherwise with Zhong Yi's commentary. That was amazing. I've got to give a like for this commentary. Having gotten used to those traditional commentaries, this one is a breath of fresh air. Zhong Yi is indeed Zhong Yi. Boring sports commentary can even be entertaining with him around. Central TV Sports Channel has really gotten the right person to do it. I was wondering what the point of getting Zhong Yi to commentate for the Olympics was at first. I always thought that there were only those few ways of presenting such events. But after I watched his commentary, I've realized that I was wrong. Among all the sports hosts and commentators in the country, Zhong Yi's commentary unique to him. Will Zhong Yi be a permanent guest commentator for the Olympics? Damn, I must definitely watch it every day then. Yeah, it'll be much more interesting with him commentating. Foot, the sarcasm about the ITTF was totally on point. Ningland's Weibo, ha 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 ha, this is the first time I've laughed through an entire table tennis match. Xiaodong, in genuflection of Teacher Zhong. Li Xiaoxian, Teacher Zhong's commentary was really awesome. The table tennis national player, Sun Lin Lin, also posted on Weibo. At Zhong Yi Professor Zhong, I, my celebrations after winning the match were a genuine reflection of my mood. It wasn't an act. The netizens were all laughing. Ha ha ha. Sun Lin Lin is almost in tears. Don't explain anymore. Lin Lin, just ignore that fellow. He was doing it on purpose. Of course, there were also some voices that disagreed. However, most of those were flooded over by the people. It's not good at all. What would the foreigners think if they saw? They'd be scolding us again. Previous poster, you're an idiot. Who cares what the foreigners say? Yeah, this is our domestic live coverage commentary, so of course their opinions would lean towards to the local audience. They definitely would have to side with our people and team. 
What do you think the other foreign countries are saying in their commentaries? An Australian friend of mine told me that their Australian commentators were all making sarcastic remarks about the Chinese team. Zhang Yi was already pretty mild about it. Did he say anything that crossed the line? I agree. There was literally no fault with Zhang Yi's commentary today. The Chinese media also joined in the fun. New commentator for Olympics. Zhang Yi's debut in sports commentary. A fresh style of hosting that leaves all citizens wanting for more. Following the Olympics, a different kind of commentator. Zhang Yi uses practical actions again to prove that he is the most irreplaceable host in the country. Stringing witty lines together, Zhang Yi transforms into a comedian. A lot of people were laughing at the headlines. They even described him as having transformed into a comedian? This fellow was already a comedian to begin with. All in all, Zhang Yi's debut commentary for the Olympics received praise from everywhere. Even Yuing Yi and Sun Lin Lin managed to rub off his fame a little and increased their popularity score and fame by quite a bit. In this world, the sports commentary scene had been stuck in the past for too long. It had always lacked the excitement and emotional ups and downs, preferring to stick to the same tried and tested methods of presentation. Whenever the audience caught game coverage, they were only interested in watching the match itself. It didn't matter who the commentator was, so that had already lost its meaning. But this time, Central TV Sports Channel made a bold attempt to change that and it had really caught the eyes of everyone. As everyone watched the match, they could also thoroughly enjoy the wit and humor of the commentator. This clearly increased the watchability the match. On the same day, the viewership ratings came out. When they received the viewership ratings table, wave after wave of cheers and screams rang out from Central TV Sports Channel's office area. It really felt like they were celebrating the Chinese New Year. The viewership ratings had blown up. Especially for the afternoon session of the Olympic live coverage, which had received the highest viewership rating. The data showed that the viewership rating for that time slot had reached an astonishing 44.3%. Remember, the previous day's viewership rating for the Olympics had already dropped to around 30% or so. With just one day's worth of commentary by Zhang Yi, it had pulled many viewers back in front of their televisions. This result and statistic was something that not even the Central TV Sports Channel's executives had expected. This was a result that had practically dumbfounded everyone. And this was only the beginning. Could it get any higher? Could they break another record again? They were looking forward to it, and the audience was looking forward to hearing Zhang Yi's commentary again the next day. Chapter 1178, Zhang Yi commentates the Olympics, part 4 of 5, the next day. Noon. The Chinese delegation had won 13 gold medals so far. In the finals of the various events held yesterday night and this morning, the Chinese athletes had performed astonishingly well. Several of the gold medals were expected while a few had come as surprises. The dominance of the Olympic host was finally starting to show. The good results that suddenly started coming over the past two days also stirred up the excitement of the people around the country. Their passion and interest in following the Olympics were now becoming stronger and stronger. At John Yi's maternal grandma's house, his grandmother said loudly, hurry up and switch on the television. His grandfather said in annoyance, it hasn't even started yet. It will soon, so just switch it on first. We don't want to miss anything, his grandmother said anxiously. His mother laughed as she went over to turn the television on and switch it to the central TV sports channel. His three sisters also gathered around. Meng Meng, don't squeeze in here. I wanna sit in front. Aya, you little rascal. It's time for brother's commentary. I've been waiting a whole day for this. Where are the melon seeds? I want to much on them as I watch. It was the weekend today and a rare get-together for the family, but everyone was only interested in watching the Olympics. At old Yao's house. Yao M.I. got a bunch of her schoolmates from Peking University's Chinese department to gather at her place. It's about to begin. Mimi, where's your dad? I want to get his autograph. He went out for a commercial appearance. Why would you want his autograph? Let's watch teacher Zhong's commentary. Did you guys watch his commentary yesterday? Ha 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 ha, it was really funny. I did, I did. 
How could we have not watched it? He he. Teacher Jong is really awesome. True, he's our teacher after all. I wonder how Teacher Jong will commentate today. All over the country, similar scenes were playing out. Countless Chinese citizens were waiting in full anticipation for today's events. First, because the events held were the more popular ones, and second, because of Zhang Yi's interesting commentary. The live broadcast began. The Olympic live coverage started. It was the finals of the men's 10 meter platform diving. Yuingi smiled and said, Hello, everyone. The competition will be starting soon. Let us first introduce today's guest commentator, my old classmate, Zhang Yi. We also have with us former world champion, Li Yang, who was on the Chinese diving team. Zhang Yi said, Hello, everyone. Li Yang spoke with some stiffness in his voice, Hello, viewers and friends. Yu Yingyi said, In today's competition, a highlight we'll be looking forward to seeing is whether Chen Xing can defend his title. If Chen Xing can win the gold medal, he would achieve the triple crown in this event at the Olympics. Zhang Yi said rationally, actually, everyone has always been too focused on the gold medals. Back when the interest in the Olympics fell, it was due to a lack of gold medal performances by our athletes. However, I feel that it shouldn't be that way. Every one of the athletes present has put in a lot of sweat, blood, and tears to get here. Every medal, every result, every wonderful moment should deserve our applause as well. This is what makes sports so beautiful in the first place. Li Yang immediately followed with, that's right. I feel that Professor Zhang's words were well said. The event began. The athletes from the various countries gradually arrived to compete for the gold medal in this event. The Australian athlete committed a huge mistake the moment he came up. After the run-up, he didn't manage to push off the platform properly, which led to him not having enough time to execute his movements. It ended up with him belly flopping. Sploosh! The sound of a loud splash. The water sprayed upwards. Yuingi said, oh, the Australian athlete has made a mistake. Li Yang frowned and said, that shouldn't have happened. It's very rare to make such a rookie mistake in the finals of an event. The Australian athlete does not look like he's in a good form today. The American athlete was the next to go. Incredibly, he also screwed up his dive. At the moment of entry into the water, he got careless and sent the water splashing two meters high. After the American athlete got out of the pool, he shook his head with a very dark expression. Li Yang said, what's going on today? Everyone seems like they aren't in form. Yuingi also said in surprise, this is a really rare occurrence that we're witnessing. Li Yang said, it's Chen Xing's turn. His first dive will be a standard dive. Yuingi said, good one, that was a perfect dive. That was really good. Li Yang said, Chen Xing should be in first place now. His score wouldn't be bad. Zhang Yi did not interrupt throughout the proceedings. His hosting and commentary style wasn't to just stick in a word or two every now and then. He preferred not to speak unnecessarily. But if he did, he would make sure it was good enough to amaze. The scores were given. Yuini was stunned. What? Why is it so low? Li Yang was also surprised. What's going on? That score is too low. It's definitely not a score that Chen Xing should get for a dive like that. What's with the judges? Oh, three of the judges have given him a low score. After dropping two of the scores given, one of the low scores were used to calculate the final score. That's why Chen Xing's score is low for his first dive. If this is the case, that would mean Chen Xing is only in third place after the first dive. That's pretty unbelievable. They did not know which country those judges were from, but it was obvious that they were trying to lower the Chinese athlete's score. The netizens started cursing. What the heck? Again? What the hell are they doing? Those idiots. Are they blind? It's so obvious that it should be a higher score. Why isn't teacher Zhong saying anything? Yuing Yi seemingly knew what the netizens were thinking. She turned her head to ask, Professor Zhong, what do you see of this? Zhong Yi pondered for a moment before saying, I'm very touched. Touched? You're feeling touched again? You were touched by the table tennis players' celebrations yesterday too. 
you're not actually feeling that emotional. Tell me just what there is to feel touched about. Lee Young said dumbfounded, how are you touched? The home viewers pricked up their ears and concentrated on listening. Zhong Yi sighed emotionally, these Olympics have really touched me. I am not touched by those athletes who have tried so hard but failed to win a medal. Instead, I am touched because those judges and referees who are blind in both eyes are determined to carry out their duties. Yuing Yi held her laughter in. Pfft! Li Yang nearly burst out laughing. The viewers were all startled for a moment before laughing uncontrollably. Ha 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 ha! Blind in both eyes? Ayo, hecking hell, this fellow is too sarcastic. Savage. Ha 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 ha. I'm so tickled. If we're talking about who has the sharpest mouth in the world, I will have to hecking give it to Zhong Yi. He doesn't even have to use any vulgarities when it comes to scolding people. Following that, Zhong Yi began a series of face smacking antics. This fellow had now gotten into the groove of being a commentator. He was getting better and better at it. Several of the foreign athletes committed mistakes again. Meanwhile, the Chinese athlete maintained his high standard and performed a perfect execution again for his second dive. This time, the judges finally give a high score as two of the lower scores got dropped. The third dive. The fourth dive. Chen Xing was leading all the way. There was no longer any suspense for the results. For every mistake that the foreign athletes committed, Zhong Yi let out a loud cheer. Zhong Yi said, watching our Chinese athlete dive is really boring. He doesn't even make a splash when he enters the water. But look at the Australian, South Korean, and American athletes. Every time they go into the water, they're always making waves. This is just like wild pigs crossing the river. It's so fun to watch. The netizens. Making waves? Wild pigs crossing the river. Ha 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 ha. Let me laugh at this for 10 minutes please. This guy is too vengeful. I just hecking love this eccentric style of commentary. On this day, Johnny once again brought out the various jokes regarding the Olympics from his previous world. Chapter 1179, Zhong Yi commentates the Olympics, part 5 of 5, the seventh day of the Olympics. It was finals of the team table tennis match. 11 to 4, 11 to 3. 11 to 7. Yuingi called out, great one, we're now leading 1 to 0 in sets played. Bao Han was here today as the guest again. As long as we can continue playing with this momentum, there shouldn't be any problems. Yuingi said, our national players are still as dependable as always. Their play is so beautiful. Zhong Yi said, there are now many foreigners who have demonized our way of playing table tennis. Oh, look. The cameras have cut to a pair of foreigners who seem to be father and son. What do you think they're whispering about? Yuingi instinctively replied, what? Zhong Yi said, that kid must definitely be asking, dad. What kind of sport is table tennis? To which his father would probably pat him on the head and say, silly kid, table tennis isn't a sport. It's a form of Chinese sorcery. Yu Ying Yi. Bao Han. Zhong Yi said, we always talk about how we can't find 11 players who can play soccer out of 1.3 billion Chinese people. We're really too harsh on them for that. Look at how it is overseas. Out of 6 billion people, they can't even find 4 people who can play table tennis. Yu Ying Yi held in her laughter. Pfft. Baohan laughed and said, that's because our training system is pretty much perfected. All of our current national players were trained from a very young age. Every step they took to get here has been extremely arduous for them. They've been pushed beyond the type of training that normal people are able to handle. That's why they're standing at the top and have the last laugh. The match was over. The final score was 3-0 for an easy win. Yuing Yi said, it's over. Congratulations to Team China, you've all done well. Baohan looked visibly excited. It's time for the press conference and the medal presentation ceremony. Yu Yi smiled and said, congratulations to Team China for standing up to the pressure to once again stand at the summit. We're really happy for them. They should finally be able to get some time off to relax for a bit after this competition. But Zhong Yi said, they won't be able to. Yu Yi said, eh? 
Zhong Yi replied, there's still an even more difficult competition that's coming up after this. Bao Han was taken aback. There isn't anything else. We're already done with the singles and team events. Yeah. Yuing Yi said, we've made a clean sweep of the medals at the Olympic table tennis events. What more difficult competition are you talking about? Zhong Yi looked at them and said, after they get back, they still have to fight for the national championship to determine who's the number one. Yu Ying Yi. Bao Han. National champion. So did he mean that the Olympics were just a warm-up match? However, Zhong Yi's words made sense as well. This left Yu Ying Yi and Bao Han unable to refute him. The eighth day of the Olympics. At the archery arena. Yu Ying Yi said, what's going on? South Korea has called for an appeal. The guest commentator, a former female archer, said, A reshoot? Ewing Yi said, They've misfired yet another arrow. The former female archer said, What? They're appealing again? John Yi said, At the archery arena of this year's Olympics, a new event called Appeal has been created. The South Koreans have an absolute chance of becoming the champion. Ewing Yi held back her laughter. Pfft. Oh God, the Chinese team has won. We won, we're the champions. Unbelievable. The men's archery team has created Olympic history. The team captain, Wu Yun, looks very emotional right now. Oh, he took off his top and undershirt too. He's letting out a roar. The South Korean team is protesting, they've gone to appeal again? Oh, they're complaining about our Chinese team's shirt removal gesture. Yu Ying Yi and the former archer were speaking one after the other. Zhong Yi bluntly said, what's wrong with removing his shirt to celebrate? Can't he get excited? What's there to fuss over? If you guys had won, you'd have taken off your pants. Taking off their pants? Yu Ying Yi was floored. On the ninth day of the Olympics. It was the men's 10 m run. It has started. There's an interesting piece of trivia about this race. We can see that three of the runners on the Canadian team look exactly the same. That's because they're triplets. Zhong Yi said, then we're in danger. Why? Zhong Yi said, if the three of them ran a portion of the race each, we'd definitely have no hope of winning. Yu Yi couldn't think of a good reply. The tenth day of the Olympics. In the stadium of the swimming finals. Yu Yi said, the cameras are now showing the rest areas. Our Chinese swimmer, Sun Qi, is currently warming up. Zhong Yi said, why is he holding a thing that looks like a wheel? Oh, Sun Chi is going to wreak havoc in the seas one. Wreak havoc in the seas? Do you think he is Neza? Yu Ying Yi said, Professor Zhong, that's just a warm-up apparatus. Zhong Yi said, the cameras are now showing the inside of the stadium. Look at that person sitting there with a staff pass hanging around his neck. Yu Ying Yi asked, who is that? The other commentator said, that's a lifeguard. Zhong Yi said, he looks so lonely sitting there with his chin resting on his hand. I bet he's thinking about his life. What's the reason for my existence? Yu Ying Yi held in her laughter. Pfft. The race began. Go for it. This is so intense. Come on, Team China. We've won. It's a gold medal. A gold medal. Sun Qi, you did well. Nicely done. Yu Yi and the other commentator got so excited they looked like they were going to jump up from their seats. Ten minutes later. The national anthem played. Soon, the medal presentation ceremony was over. Sun Chi looked very excited as he bit his gold medal. Suddenly, he got off the podium and jogged toward another zone to hug his coach and teammates. Then, on the large screen display, he apparently took something from his teammate. It wasn't clear what it was, but it looked like a small box or something similar. After that, he strode forward, taking long strides. Yu Yi was startled. What is Sun Chi doing? The swimming commentator said, A, eh, over there is? The next second, everyone understood what was going on. They saw Sun Chi walking up to a woman and excitedly putting his gold medal around her neck. Then he got on his knees and took out a little box that opened to reveal a diamond ring. Yu Yi smiled and said, he's proposing. 
she was the women's swim team's Li Xiao Xiao. In the previous Olympics, she was a bronze medalist in a 400-meter swim. Sun Qi and Li Xiao Xiao's relationship was no secret. Everyone knew that they were together, but no one had expected that Sun Qi would propose to his girlfriend after winning the gold medal. He was even doing this in an Olympic stadium and in the focus of many live broadcast cameras. Li Xiao Xiao covered her mouth in surprise and started tearing up. Yu Yi was feeling very happy for them. This is such a heartwarming scene. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Li Xiao Xiao has said yes. Sun Qi is putting the ring on for her. That's great, I wish them all the best. Yu Yi said. Zhong Yi suddenly said, their union has resolved yet another universal question for humanity. Huh? Yu Yi was taken aback. What universal question? Zhong Yi said, if his mother and fiancé fall into the sea at the same time, who would he choose to save first? Yu Yi laughed on the broadcast. The staff and camera operators in the studio also laughed out loud. When the TV viewers heard that, they laughed until they doubled over. Over the past few days of the Olympics, everyone had been laughed senseless due to Zhong Yi's commentary. A clearly intense competition that was supposed to stoke up the excitement of the people was constantly taken down another path, with those random comments by Zhong Yi. This is unbearable. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, I can't take this anymore. I really have to take my hat off to that mouth of teacher Jong's. He's such a jokester. I'm so entertained. This commentary is really on a godly level. I really like teacher Jong so much. The Olympics are coming to an end and I'm starting to feel reluctant to see Jong Yi go. Will they invite Jong Yi to commentate for other sports and competitions in the future? If Jong Yi is the commentator, I'll goddamn watch it even if it's for a Chinese soccer match. Right, me too. How awesome. This fellow is always hogging the limelight wherever he goes. He now has another qualification as a sports commentator on his resume. The viewership ratings for the Olympics live coverage was constantly hitting new highs. 44%. 48%. 51%. Finally, it even reached 54.3%. Other than the efforts put in by the Chinese Olympic delegation, Zhong Yi would absolutely be able to claim credit for setting such a mythical and legendary viewership rating. He had played the biggest role in making this happen. The domestic media was full of praise. The Chinese delegation has amassed 25 gold medals. Zhong Yi's commentary wins the unanimous approval of the people. Zhong Yi has added a different flavor to the Olympic Games. A national comedian is born. An official of the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games expresses, for the next Olympics, I hope to see Zhong Yi take the role of a commentator again. The Olympic live coverage sets a historical record in viewership. Zhong Yi's domestic popularity score soars yet again. Chapter 1180, Zhong Yi's first music video single? Several days later. The Olympics successfully came to an end. Zhong Yi was also finished with his commentator role after completing his job successfully. On the way back, he was even stopped by several people a few times. The first one was at a traffic junction. The moment he got there, he was stopped by a female traffic cop. The female traffic cop kept looking at him. Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi said rather nervously, Officer, did I violate any traffic rules? The female traffic cop said, please show me your driving license. Here. Zhong Yi quickly took it out and added, I didn't drink any alcohol. The female traffic cop held him there for a long time as she spoke to him. Zhong Yi kept trying to explain, I really didn't run the red light. If you don't believe me, you can check the traffic cameras. I really didn't do anything wrong. The female traffic cop was starting to feel a little embarrassed. I know that. I just recognized your car from a distance and was hoping to get an autograph from you. To someone who managed the traffic as part of their work, Zhong Yi's license plate and car model was clearly not a secret. Zhong Yi was both flawed and amused. Hi, you should have just said so. You gave me such a fright. Then he happily signed an autograph for her without hesitation. The female traffic cop was delighted. After Zhong Yi left, she started bragging about it over the police radio. I got an autograph from Zhong Yi. 
R. Where? At the junction of Zishin Road. Going where? South. As a result, Zhong Yi was soon stopped again, at the third junction as he went by another female traffic cop who had sped over quickly on her motorbike. Was it another traffic violation? Zhong Yi panicked a little as he frantically pulled to the side. The female traffic cop got off her motorbike and knocked excitedly on the BMW's window. Zhong Yi rolled down the car window. The female traffic cop said, Teacher Zhong, can I have an autograph? Zhong Yi was speechless. This was the scariest way of asking him for an autograph that Zhong Yi had ever come across. Finally, he was stopped when he arrived at Old RAO's neighborhood. Before Zhong Yi became famous, he had lived here for some time. Later, his work studio was established here. Many of the neighbors here knew him well. Ah, Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi is back. Little Zhong, are you done with being a commentator? We watched all of the events that you commentated. Yeah, it was so damn funny. You got even more famous. The commentary for the closing ceremony was really good too. Zhong Yi gave them a fist and palm salute and said with a smile, it was all thanks to everyone's support. Everyone had something to say. Of course we'd support you. Who else would we support if not you? You're the most well-known person to come from our neighborhood. Yeah, you were born as one of us, so you'll die as one of, a. Eh, that doesn't sound right. With that, everyone laughed happily. Upstairs. Ario I mean was not home today and had probably brought Chen Chen out somewhere. Yang Shu wasn't in either and had probably gone off somewhere to distribute pamphlets to spread the name of Taiji Fist. Thus, Zhong Yi made his way back to the studio where he received a chart depicting the growth of his popularity score both domestically and overseas during the Olympics period. He nodded approvingly as he went through the statistics. Zhong's was said, this is for the domestic market. Zhong Yi said, okay. Zhong's was said, these are the statistics for Asia. Zhong Yi said, um, it's quite good. Ha Chichi said, and an indication chart of how well your reputation is right now. All of the statistics have shown a positive growth. Zhong Yi smiled and said, all right, thanks for all the hard work in the past few days. Ha Chichi smiled and said, we didn't do much. All of it was mainly down to your good performance as a commentator. Jong's was said, right, the viewers really approve of it. Even the media and officials have acknowledged your breakthrough contribution to the commentary field. With your social relations in the industry, to have so many people publicly acknowledging it is a very strong affirmation of your work. Anyway, this role of yours as an Olympic commentator has brought a large increase to your popularity. Although you're still quite a distance away from reaching the domestic S-list rankings, the difference is no longer as great as before. Zhong Yi said in satisfaction, let's take it slowly then. We should always learn to walk before we run. His goal was definitely to aim for a spot on the Chinese S-list celebrity rankings this year. However, Zhong Yi did not expect that he could surmount this obstacle by just relying on the Olympic commentary that he did. That would be wishful thinking on his part. An Olympic theme song. An Olympic promotional song. An Olympic commentary role. The few jobs he took turned out to be quite good as the results he gained from them were rather impactful. He was quite satisfied with the way things were. As for the remainder of his journey, he would have to take it step by step. Hachichi asked, what plans do you have next? What do you guys suggest? Zhong Yi sought their opinions. Everyone chipped in with their ideas. Take an acting project. Produce a television show? Film a commercial? Release a new song? It was all the same old things. Zhong Yi thought for a moment, and then said, why don't we release a single first? A music video single. Little Wang clapped her hands in agreement. Yes, yes, you've never filmed a music video or released a single before. Zhong Yi was now more keen to try out activities that he had never done before. Doing something different often helped him increase his popularity much faster, and he had benefited from doing it many times in the past. Like for commercials, he had filmed or produced too many of those. If he were to continue doing the same thing, the results it would bring would definitely not be as good as before. This applied to other activities as well. For example, acting in a movie. 
If you acted well as a daughter-in-law in one, two, or three films, you would probably be more popular than anyone else for such a role and no one would be able to play it better than you. But then, you'd be typecast soon after and your popularity would eventually plateau. This was not what Zhang Yi wanted. What he needed to have was a well-rounded development that could bring him to greater heights. So it was more important for him to keep pushing out new activities that would bring greater novelty and surprise to the audience. If that happened, his popularity would rise faster. But there weren't any big projects to take on at the moment. And as a singer, he had not even released an album or music video single of his own, so that really did feel rather unacceptable. Since he would have to release one sooner or later, why not do it now? Harchichi asked, what do you need us to do? Which publisher should we work with? Wu Yi asked. John Yi smiled and said, let's talk about that later. Having worked hard for so many days, let's all take a few days break and get some good rest. This will also be a good time for me to think about the music video single, but there's no rush for now. Jones was said in amusement, aren't you able to compose a song as and when you want? Do you even need to think about it? Zhang Yi said helplessly, this will be my first single, so I definitely have to plan carefully and not be too casual about it. Let me give it some thought. To other celebrities, all they probably wanted was a good song for themselves. They would only need to find a good production team or invite some celebrities to make a guest appearance in their music videos and then with some packaging and publicity, get their single ready for release and make an attempt on the ranking charts. But Zhang Yi's aim was clearly higher than that. He did not lack any good songs. What he lacked was a medium to project a feeling across to the audience. Besides, a song and a music video were two entirely different concepts. A music video would require the visuals to match the song. This was even more difficult than producing just the song. Whenever he did something, Zhang Yi's character would always dictate that he do it to the best of his abilities. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it at all. At the very least, he would have to be satisfied with his efforts. What song should he choose? How should he sing it? Who would they invite? All of these had to be planned properly. Zhang Yi swept his hand out. All right then, everyone. Go ahead on your few days of break. Okay. We'll wait for your news then. Are you serious about giving us a few days break? Thank you, Director Zhong. I'll stay here and put in overtime then. We cannot leave the office unmanned. All right, old Wu. Thanks for the hard work. Heh, I'm just doing my part for everyone. Although the studio was recently established, everyone had been old colleagues for many years. All of them had weathered the storm and fought on the same side. So the esprit de corps in the office was very good, and everyone behaved like they were friends. Zhang Yi walked to the bar and poured himself a glass of wine as he gave some thought to the music video. At this moment, Dong Shanshan called. Zhang Yi picked the phone up with a smile and affected, Hello, Teacher Shanshan. Hello, Teacher Zhang. Dong Shanshan laughed and said, Are you done with your work? Zhang Yi said, Yeah, now that the Olympics have ended, I have nothing left to do. What's the matter? I'm at my studio. Do you want to call Ying Yi and the others over for a drink? Dong Shanshan said, Why would you want to drink so early in the morning? I'm calling to check whether you'll be free the day after tomorrow. Yes, why? Zhang Yi asked. Dong Shanshan smiled. School will be reopening soon. Many of our classmates talked about wanting to go back to campus to visit the teachers and have a look at the place where we fought our battles, and lived our lives. Zhang Yi immediately said, I agree with them. It'll be good to do that. Dong Shanshan said, we've graduated for several years but have not been back before this because we were too embarrassed that we hadn't found our success yet. But everyone has been working hard for the past two years and have more or less gained some achievements by now. So we came up with the idea of having this class reunion and hopefully gather the people from our class. Can you contact everyone? I can only try, although most of them have already been notified. All right, I definitely don't have any problems attending the reunion. Then it's settled. I'll go and contact the rest now. Sure, I'm starting to miss everyone too. After hanging up, Johnny gulped down the entire glass of wine. 
Going back to his alma mater? Reuniting with his old classmates? Suddenly, he was quite looking forward to it. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.